Jay Thomas Show. Sirius 108 and XM 139. This is the Jay Thomas Show. The interesting, the odd, and the bizarre people behind the, uh, uh interesting. The odd and bizarre stories. Jay gets in, stirs it up, and spits it out. He's a professional. It's all here on the Jay Thomas Show with Rodney Lee Conover, Julie, Madison, Kevin Meany, Garrett, and Christina, and Ira the Weatherman. This is the Jay Thomas Show. Wow. Um, Shuli uh, will be here in a matter of moments. Ira, who... Uh, Good afternoon, we, Jay. Who we have decided is going to be much more... Then the weatherman, uh, we're expanding his role, Garrett. Uh, musicologist will be one of them because many people have noticed that when he, I mean, he comes in, he knows the songs, he's singing, he's everything else. Hey, I don't know how you did it, Christina, but now I have your cold. I'm I don't sorry. know. You know what's funny, it's Garrett? Allergies. Do you think fantasizing about someone, you can catch something from them? <laughs> <laughs> I was fantasizing that I was um, um, moving Christina and, and, and making her, you know, giving her the entire show the other night. Wow. That is a fantasy. It was unreal. And um, we made Garrett and Shuley and everybody um, grab their ankles and walk naked down the hall as we got rid of them. You know, you know, that's they, not a bad idea, just to do The it. Japanese would do that to people, to torture <laughs> them sometimes. Um, and then you and I were just left alone. <clears throat> Apparently, everybody else was let go. It's serious. And they actually shot us into a satellite. What? And then I woke up with a cold. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Unbelievable. So, Ira, uh, Christina, you said... Christina, hey. yeah. the only thing is to do about a cold is mm-hmm. to take some scotch. <clears throat> that's right. With soda... And let it sweat over your whole system. All it's right. Science Wednesday, by the way, where that's Thanks. just the tip of the iceberg. You need right some vitamins. You're right, vitamin I do. Vitamin C's. You're right. Vitamin B's. Unbelievable. And this is very, very good. Take two vitamin C's. Mm-hmm. And your cold will go away by tomorrow or the day after. I don't have to think anymore, Garrett. I just have to just sit here. Just, you know. mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, let him go. Like your wife's telling you about her day. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Jane, you know what? right yes. now, yes, sir. I am sitting <laughs> uh-huh. in a ho-ho chair, ha chair. What chair? Are you? No, wait a minute now. You're in the ha-ha chair, right? That's right. Now, you made a little mistake there, but let's... let's who ho, do you think? Ha ha chair. That's right. If it was called the ho ho chair, who do you think should sit in it? Lindsay Lohan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, lady, I tell you what, he has come in. That's his, <laughs> it. Even got Christina to laugh that mucusy, horrifying I laugh. I can't help it. It's not going away. I remember that from the dream last night, and that oh, laugh Jesus. was followed by. <sighs> Like that. <laughs> All right. Good now, afternoon. Okay. Shirley, uh, welcome to the show. Shirley. What an entrance. Uh, I wanted to say that we are expanding uh, Ira's role. He will be a musicologist, philosopher, do science. And just a few moments ago, Shirley, he made a mistake and said he was in the ho ho chair. I said, <laughs> no, it's the ha ha chair. And I said, no, he's on his he's on his own, right, Garrett? Totally on his yep. own. I said, who do you think would be sitting? In that chair, if it Lindsay was the whole home. Low hand. <laughs> Very you. nice. Very nice. Huh? Wow. Well, my work's done. I don't even have to be here. Today. And you, they say comedy can't be taught. That's what they say. Yes, they now, do. Now, you know, I do have um, kind of an uh, interesting uh, uh, guy coming on in about an hour. And there were some kids, or there are kids, black kids, and maybe Hispanic kids too, but mostly blacks, that are being beaten up. Or, or teased or whatever in various schools when they make really good grades they are accused of acting white sellouts but it's becoming a problem it's like one of the bullying things and I've read about there was actually a lawsuit in South Carolina where these kids were suing you know like bullying when someone's getting you know picked on or called gay or whatever the deal is right they sued the administration of the school because they're not protecting them from the kids pushing them and everything down the hall 
because they act white. So we this guy wrote this book called Acting White. Now, whenever anybody does that, right off the bat, surely, what would you think his political persuasion is? When, Even when, if he's trying to explain it, you know. When somebody is getting beat up or when somebody No, when somebody someone? writes a book oh. with the term white in it, like acting white or white man's burden. It has to be a conservative, I would imagine, no? That that's what I would think too. Now, Garrett, when you read about this guy, do you do you think he's conservative or he's a white guy? Or he is, but he's real smart. He's, you know, from Harvard. <laughs> yeah, but that you can be anything from Harvard, right? They all seem to come out Republican. At Harvard? No. Let's kick Erkel's no. ass. No, no. That's exactly what we're trying to go against. Now, there's a good example, though. Erkel. Ira, that's unbelievable. He's on fire, Wasn't man. he a guy that kind of acted white? He with acted the gla- strange. Well, his well, name yes, he- which equals white. His name was Jaleel White, so... Oh. <laughs> well, that's his real name. Yeah. He was Urkel in the show. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, you ever been a black guy named Mr. Brown that acted white? I don't think here, so. <laughs> here is what the book is about. People say that, the, and I don't know, I don't think you can answer this. It is said that black young men especially have come to the ruinous conclusion that their academic excellence is somehow inconsistent with their racial identities. This is one of those guys that's against um, affirmative action. Right, Garrett? That's what I would think. I think the main point of the book is that Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. segregation or desegregation hurt the black people. He's got to say, he's got segregation hurt the black people. He's got to say that. No, that de, that de, I mean, desegregation. Yeah, yeah. I've heard that before. And that he wants more black students to go to black schools with black professors. And I'll tell you what I really, truly believe it is. Surely, I mean, this is the truth. Go ahead. I, well, the, an the, idea the, has the, gone off. The truth the thing, sound. Here's the weird thing. <laughs> the sound of when, truth. When the, when the, when the Germans or Russians or whatever these, these Huns were that picked on the Jews, right? That for some reason it didn't stop the Jews from advancing, you know, um, academically. They would, you know, wouldn't be allowed schooling. They would be killed. They'd be murdered. They would be vilified. Everything, right? So, what's weird is, is that, and I'll ask this guy this: What would keep a population like the Jews from not having um, the same problem? Uh, if if the problem is people enslaving you and killing you and saying you're no fucking good, um, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That never stuck with the. You know, somebody told me there's there's so many more poor Jews in the world than rich Jews, but of course everybody has that image, right? I think it comes down to of how por- you feel feel about yourself, even as a as a group of individuals. Poor Jews that- are like the white buffaloes of nature, you know. <laughs> Not a lot of them roaming around. You may see one every now and then. You're, there are poor Jews. <laughs> there are. You see, you, you understand something that if you were a black man, you would have said just the opposite. You would have said, you know, Jay, that's cr-. instead this Jewish thing you guys have. If is, I was a black man, I'd be dancing what I just said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, it's the stereotypes. Right. I would be. Well, listen, <laughs> McDonald's isn't helping. <laughs> Have you seen a McDonald's commercial where a black guy orders something without pop locking during the order? <laughs> well, then I then then that's what that's what I truly believe. I believe that over uh and maybe even thousands of years, the black person has been talked down to and I think it's almost like a beaten child. I mean, you know, mentally or right. physically beaten whereas for whatever reason you Jews are uppity. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, getting shoved into ovens kind of makes you that way. You but know? you see what I mean? Oh. You don't hear oh, a black oh. guy saying being held in slavery or beaten or hung or st- strung up. Well, then you're not watching enough BET. No, but I'm saying is that maybe we're in the middle of that time, maybe as a, as a what do you call it, as a ridiculed race. Mm-hmm. Listen to this. I should be a philosopher. Look at you. You guys were tortured for thousands of years. Right. 
the blacks have only been tortured for maybe 500 years. You know what I mean? Right. M- maybe they're moving through. It's, it's like being told you're ugly or you're no good all of your life as a person. You know, most people don't recover from that. All Tell right. me about it. I haven't. Yeah. So yeah. that that's uh this guy is com- So Garrett, do you think we've opened a nice uh door for this guy? We're going to, you know. It, definitely. Right? I just I don't have that much faith in this guy. That's Acting a good way to start. One, yeah. As soon as I see a title like that, I know that we're going to and and uh, this has been happening. We I've been seeing a lot of people that we've interviewed on the on the front page of the newspaper and stuff, you know. And this has been going on for years and I'm going to start saying it when I see somebody. Scientists, you know this guy is going to be on every talk show this weekend, right? Mm-hmm. Fox. His book is Acting White, okay? It'll be in the when you're flying, surely it'll be in the airport, right? And I wonder if you had a a book acting like a Jew. <laughs> I think I'd buy it. Well, I'd definitely thumb through it, that's for sure. <laughs> I don't know if I'd lay the cold hard cash down, but You don't know if you'd actually Yeah, I'd borrow it. it from a friend maybe. Mm-hmm. You know? And then Garrett, uh today we have another holiday road. I, I, I will tell you, I'm gonna be honest with you. Uh you are not as good at picking these places as I am. And or as the oh, listeners. Yeah. How, yeah. How'd that Ozark Mountain Fortress go? <laughs> no, somebody turned that in. I, I did like it though. That's true. Okay, all right. You know what? That's one out of like thirteen hundred. You've picked about four or five stinkers here, and here's one of them: the old Rhinebeck Aerodrome. <laughs> what the fuck? Is that? Now, thank you. Now remember, Garrett. Sometimes I have a, to. And sometimes you can get a clue from the title, from the yes. name of what it has to deal with. But. I know somebody recommended it, but you don't have to pick it. <laughs> uh, now I have to use. Everything in, not just in my fibers. I'm going to have to go back into my DNA and to pull everything out of myself to make this interview sound like something. That's going to be what you've done is no. He's done something, surely. He's challenged me Mm -hmm. beyond my means. He's saying I cannot you're not... keep propping these fucking stiffs up that you picked for the holiday road. I'm propping them up. He's he's challenging your professionalism. Why would I ever <laughs> have fallen for this? You know, Jay, you may not be the best person for the contest, you know. Right. Right. Well, because of legal reasons, <laughs> someone else has to choose, you know. And then the guy, the lawyer says to me, I understand by review throughout the entire company, a man named... Ira, the weatherman, seems to be the most honest man in the building. Okay? That is right, Jay. That's why. No, thank you, Ira. Just no. swallow. That is right. Ah, uh, that's fine. That's fine. I am <laughs> honest. <laughs> right. I try to keep honest. Right. You are a good person. Now, <laughs> that's why he has uh, to be chaperoned to the break room because he's so Garrett. honest. <laughs> <laughs> now, what's the reason that um, he has to be chaperoned to the kitchen? What was the problem? They finally ran out of pretzels one day. No, <laughs> didn't someone say that Ira creeped them out or something? Because he was in there taking, you know, cases of soda and bags of pretzels. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the I other... thought it was like he was the, he was scaring somebody. No, that was Madison every Friday morning. She would say that. <laughs> Poor darling. All mm-hmm. right. Now, now, Garrett, just quickly with a headline, I'm going to get to the phones at 888-4-102-102. What, 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 what is so great about the old Rhinebeck Aerodome? It's just a bunch of airplanes. Yeah, but it's like the oldest airplanes that exist. But the Holiday Road is for kooky stuff. I I would go there. There's no doubt. I would pull off the... But it's kind of square. It's the ball of twine segment. Don't you understand? It's it's the largest rubber band collection. We booked a woman yesterday uh, who told us, you know, how to die, how to get buried, and that led to me booking a person from a body farm. Okay, (laughs) big difference, Garrett. Big difference, Garrett. You could watch a 1909 plane fly in the air. I think I've seen, I'm going to go see some guy who was born in 1909 decompose in the field <laughs> at the body farm. Big difference. Big difference there. Okay. Jay, so that, yes, Ira. If you weren't in California, if yes. you were in New York, yes. I would take you to Empire City. <laughs> All right. With gambling? Yeah. I went to the casino the other night and, uh, my wife and her, her wild girlfriend, um, 
were so loaded, uh, we played um, three card poker. They couldn't figure it out. Okay, kind of a hard. <laughs> <laughs> they were completely loaded. Slow down, man. Yeah. Well, and did they... I see the other night in the mm-hmm. Alcas racetrack, Chase? Who'd you see? I saw a state senator. At the racetrack? At the racetrack. Wow. His name is Pedro Espada. Of course it is. You sure it wasn't just the janitor? <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, let's go to Carl of New Hampshire, who checks in with us every now and again. Good afternoon, uh, Carl. Hello, Carl. How are you? What can we do for you? Carl, all the way down. The bottom, all the way down. Uh, past that one. All the way down. By the way, Shuli, the phone calls in the last, I would say, 18 months have been unbelievable. But it's only because the same people call over and over again more often. Whatever works, man. Yes, sir. That's what I They say. all love our show, Jay. That's mm-hmm. why they're calling up. Gary, you think people can tell I'm doing that kind of David Letterman joking thing? I think Definitely. You, I think yeah. you need to tap a pencil more, like Carson, <laughs> against the cup. Can I imitate enough people as I try to continue <laughs> to make it? Okay. Um, uh, I went on, I'm gonna, one second, Carl. You know, I went on KTLA Channel 5. Uh, last week. I won't hold I that dro- against you. I drove at 4 o'clock in the morning, got there at 6, went on. Ripped on it. Ryan Seacrest. Yes, and came back. Now, wait a minute. I looked into the camera there and I said, hey, I love this. I would like to do this for a living. So, and I'm not into the camera. I'm talking to everybody here at Channel 5. I want to do this. I'm comfortable. I can do it. <laughs> and do you know, <laughs> I meant it. Right. The director called me up and said, uh, left me a message, You're director of the thing, right? I call her back, and she goes, I just want to tell you something. That sarcastic thing you do when everybody knows you're kidding <laughs> is so believable in some weird way. I mean, the uh, of course I know you don't want a job here at Channel 5 like that. And I'm on the phone going, uh-huh. <laughs> there you go. There's your wit. I didn't know right how to say. Ass. I didn't know how to say. But I do. Yeah. But I, I said something like, when you're an old beat up, you know, actor or whatever it is, you end up on. It used to be ended up on local TV. Sometimes as the kitty clown. You know, a lot of those guys that were clowns were failed actors. They'd gone to Hollywood. They'd done everything, right? Stuntmen. Yeah, they come back to like you know Albuquerque and they become you know Mickey the Clown. Bonkers. The hey, it's Bonkers the Clown. Every the, at one time, uh, you know, there was like you know. Eight or nine hundred television stations. Each one of them had a morning show. A clunky the clown. Would, I'd do the. I bet you I could do an afternoon clown show in L.A. And I bet you I could pull a number. I'll we, bet you. We do. I'm an, not kidding. We do an afternoon clown show five days a week here. You uh, would be my sidekick. Oh, in and a your second. name would. You would be in a wheelchair. Right. And your name would be Hebe. That's he, what, oh, Hebe. I was thinking maybe Stu the, Stu the Jew. No, wait a minute. A- no, we wouldn't make it obvious. I'd right. call you Abe. Right. Your name would be Abe, okay? Abe. Now, but you'd be in a wheelchair. Hello, so have, Jay. Like, Hello, yeah, Jay. A- this is now, look, Jerry Lewis. Ira would be the weatherman. We'd have the map and the whole thing. But it's a kiddie show, right? Right. And I mean it. We'd have Miss Christina. And all she did was she'd sit by a big telephone and she'd answer it for the whole show. With a cigarette. That's it, Miss Christina. <laughs> I th- listen, here's- Garrett, you the floor manager, and you keep throwing your hand at us, but at the wrong time. Right, you're like you know? a, you're like a retarded Gelman. <laughs> that would be. I think we should just film a pilot, just just to shop mm-hmm. it around. I guarantee. Look, worst comes to worst, we get a hit show on Spike. You know what I mean? They'll let anything Hello, on that Jay, show. This is Jerry Lewis. Can you imagine the camera just goes on Ira when he talks in the middle of whatever we're doing, you know? And then we interview a guy like, now, in your in your new book, Acting Like a Child, you know? All right, Carl of New Hampshire. That's I'm so sorry. Funny. That just came to me. Yes, Carl, go ahead. Carl? Hello, oh, Carl. Come Carl. on. Carl. All right, get rid of him. We made it here. Let's go to Tiki Barber. Tiki of Boston. Hello, Tiki. How are you? Good, how are you, Jack? Now, how can you have that name and the great defensive back of the, uh, you know, Tampa Bay Buccaneers? Is he still there, Garrett? Still playing? Tiki? No. He's he's retired? Oh, no, Tiki was in New York. Yeah. His brother, Rondé. That's right. 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 You, they had a hit be, show on here called The Barber Shop. They yes. sure did. That's a good name. <laughs> um, Tiki, how do you get that name, Tiki? That's a, I only thought Tiki Barber had that. 
Uh, it's just a nickname uh, a few friends of mine gave me. What's your first name? Torch? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I was just calling about this whole acting white thing. <laughs> Sorry, Jay's still laughing at my killer joke. <laughs> I, I, I bet you were uh, thinking about acting white. You're from South Boston, are you? You're a Southie? What's that? I say, are you a Southie? South Boston? No, 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 no. Just regular Boston. I'm actually from South Africa originally. I moved here about 10 years ago. So you're your a name hardcore is, Southie. Your name is Tiki Torch, and you're from South Africa. <laughs> That's unbelievable. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Well, that was, that was whole you know what? How did I get a laugh on a joke I just stole? How did I do that? It was funny because you it put the right names on. together. I, I did. I put them right together. Thank you. It's a whole new joke. Man. I didn't. I, I. You know what? For one second, I was thinking, do I say torch tiki? No, I say tiki torch. You went with your gut, and it was. Good. I did. It, it went it, like that. If I was playing golf, that same thought process would have put it in the water. <laughs> but as as a humorist. You know, it works. Uh, Tiki, go ahead. I'm sorry. We're going to have this guy on. I'm sure he has no idea what he's about to get into, but uh, acting white. Yeah. Yeah, no. Um, you raised the point about um, how the Jewish people have, you know, pushed on, and yet the black people are still kind of, uh, uh, I don't know, backward or, like, still struggling to catch up. And um, Right, but wait a minute now. But wait a minute. The point I made was is that they have a smaller history of being enslaved, than the Jew does. That that that's true too. But I also yeah. think the fact that you know Jews have a common denominator, and that is their religion. Um, black people, we you know, there's so many black people on this planet, and all of them believe different things. That sometimes it's hard to unify us under one umbrella. And I think the main reason why the Jewish people took over is because they had one common denominator they could uh, identify with, and that was their religion, whether or not. You know, they practice their religion. It's a different story. But at the end of the day, they're all united. So it was, I don't want to say easier, but it it was a lot smoother to know that, you know, when you meet a Jewish person in the street, chances are, you know, that you do believe in the same uh, religion. And that sort of kind of unified them and brought them together. But didn't the high five do the same thing for black people? <laughs> Yeah. Now, now you're going to make me have to call the NAACP. <laughs> By the way, I had that I had that line in my head about 30 seconds in. That know? was good. Now listen, Tiki, you that's great, and I agree with that, um, and I ab- absolutely. But a- as you were as you were talking, you said before the Jewish people took over, you said some things. As if, you know, you you said the prejudicial things about the Jews. And I don't know that this is about prejudice, this guy coming on. He's saying that had that that the if they kept them separate but equal, I think, that everybody would be okay education wise. But you got shit stuff. I mean, I'm from the South and black people got they got nothing in the schools forever, right? So you're also fighting through generations of of nobody cluing you in. You know what I mean? Yeah. That takes a long time. That takes a, and in fact, as you're talking to me right now, do you think if you were in school now, anybody would beat you up for acting white? Um, I actually did have a couple of cases where I, I, uh, when I first moved here and, um, you know, I don't really talk with the hood accent and all that. So I'm black in right. case you couldn't tell. Um, and I lost a lot of friends or lost a lot of potential relationships because they saw me as acting white. And now I'd say about 80% of my friends are white, not by, you know, necessarily choice, but, you know, due to circumstance, the only people that were really willing to accept me were white people. So that, with, that with, And you also had the South African accent. Women must just gnaw on your penis. See, I, I wasn't wise enough to keep it. So I still have a bit of an accent, but I What are you doing with those prawns? <laughs> <laughs> I just watched that the other night. It's so good. You know, Tiki, um, I'll tell you, there's a guy in New Jersey. Garrett, we never did get this guy on, but I, I, I tried. He moved from South Africa, and he became an American citizen, right? And he's yep. getting into medical school, and they asked him his race, and he put... African American, right? Yeah, I remember. I remember you talking about that guy. Yeah, I never could get the guy on because I think the trial is still going on. Uh, look that up. You're from South Africa, and now, yep. now he says he wasn't being 
you know, funny or anything else. He meant it. And he's a smart guy and he's going to go to medical school. And he wasn't racist and he was against apartheid and all that other stuff. But he felt as though that he was as African as as you are because he was born there four generations before him born there and all that um what would what he should he have gotten a scholarship that was saved for an african-american yeah absolutely i mean that's uh that's the fault of the uh whoever's uh, apl- uh awarding the scholarship i mean it's a type of question where um it's very loaded so yeah he is jumping through the loophole and he yeah. probably is taking some money out of you know a black person's pocket but you know, just because you're black and American doesn't make you African American. I mean, it makes you black American. Some of those guys were taken from Haiti, you know, taken from different parts of the world. But just because right. there's a large concentration of black people in Africa, they assume every black person on the street is African. You know, it's fucking it up. It's the goddamn the it's the physical color. We need to all end up mating and being more of a neutral color, surely. That's the truth. Yeah, um, a khaki, a khaki slash beige kind of color. Very <laughs> khaki beige. You know what I would like to be uh, eventually? Olive drab would be a great uh, color. That would be a mixture of, I would say, Chinese, black, Hispanic, well, Latin, anyway, Spanish or whatever. So, and, and, and I believe that uh, interracial marriage is on the upswing, and I think that that is going to save our, uh, you know, uh, our, our our civilization. Now, now, when you walk down the street, and I assume you're a tall, handsome uh, man, South South African man. Uh, handsome, when you yeah. when you very handsome, and when you date these uh, uh, white women, I mean, do people stare at you, or do you feel? Um, does it piss you off? Do you have to hold your temper and your tongue when you walk into a restaurant or something? Um, it's not too bad because I live up in the East Coast. Um, but my girlfriend went to school down in South Carolina at the Citadel. Uh-oh. And, um, she know, went to the Citadel. Was... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Your girlfriend, I assume, is white, and she went to the Citadel. Yep. So that means she's a soldier. I mean, that's not a joke down there. Um, she didn't contract. Uh, she was gonna contract, but I kind of talked her out of it because I was actually going to join the Navy, and she didn't want me to go, and I didn't want her to go. So we just decided to pursue professional careers rather than... But she was like... she's a, So she's a raised conservatively also. Tiki! Yes. yes. So What's far, up, this call is <clears throat> not a touchdown. No, it isn't. It isn't a touchdown yet, but it's going to be. So do they look at you funny when you go into restaurants and stuff? Uh, yes, they do. And uh, the weirdest part that uh, really got me trippy when I got here was... Um, the fact that even the black people look at you funny when you're with a white girl. So it's really like a no-win situation. Well, all you got to do is go over and high-five them, and that makes everything okay. And head to an Asian neighborhood. They don't have That's a problem right. with that shit as long as you buy something. Well, Tiki, thank you. Tiki, um, first yeah. of all, you're supposed to hug them. That's, That's right. He'll do that. Tiki, thank, you. Tiki, thank you very much. Why retire so young? No, no, no. This isn't that Tiki. This is a, just another man <laughs> named Tiki. A Shay, different guy. Yes, our, headline uh, CNN yeah. uh, breaking yes. news: hostage it. situation in Maryland at the Discovery, Discovery Channel, Channel yeah. headquarters are evacuated. I'm a hostage situation. All right, hold on a minute. Do we have breaking Garrett, news sound? Garrett, hold on a minute. Go right now to the Discovery Channel. Thank you, Tiki. And get me the list of every show on the Discovery Channel. And we will try and guess when we come back who you think the disgruntled show host is. See, I got it. Hold on. What? Hold, no, I was just going to say. I'll wait. Stop. J. Thomas Show. Well, uh, the reports are true. Let's go now to our on-the-spot reporter. Uh, go, Garrett. Let's go. Good evening, Mr. and Mrs. America and all the ships at sea. It's the Dumbo Radio Network. That's what I'm talking about. Let's join our special reporter in the field, Jeff Furlock. Jeff Furlock. Jeff Furlock. Jeff Furlock. Ace reporter. Yeah. Jeff Furlock reporting live. Who? Excuse me. I'm the- sorry. What is your name again, sir? Sorry, these helicopters are going above me. Uh, Jeff Furlock reporting live from the offices of the Discovery Channel in Silver Springs, Maryland. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon. Uh, hey, uh, well, hey, wait a second. Uh, long- uh, get, uh, yes, hold it a sir. second, Jeff. Hold it. Would those be the choppers from American Chopper? <laughs> yes, that was- 
That's a good one, Jay. But this is a serious situation. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. That's okay. Uh, at least one person is being held hostage, and the building has been evacuated. I now, do you think that, that could be Les Stroud from Beyond Survival? Well, this is no joking matter, sir. I'm sorry. Apparently, Go ahead. the man in question has two tanks strapped to his back, which leads people to believe that he... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's the guy from Cash Cab. Ah. <laughs> which... <laughs> Well, I spoke with Captain Paul Stark, who informed yeah. me that the gunman is upset that the deadliest catch killed off Captain Phil and wants him <laughs> back on the show immediately. I could relate to that. Yeah, all right. Mm -hmm. Now, is the gunman... Also, we were told he was uh, of of Asian descent. Have you seen the picture of the gunman? Uh, no, but I saw him in the window, and he looks a little bit like Mike Degree. <laughs> <laughs> the he has on his back. Oh my God! He nice. used my friend. <laughs> Which leads me to believe that he wants to be on the new week Shark Week, and he's just prepared and ready to go. Uh, Jeff, can you confirm? Can you yeah. confirm or deny that this is just a new reality show? Discoveries. Sorry, that this is a new reality show that Discovery Channel's filming called How Hostages Are Taking? I don't know, but I find it ironic that this is actually Science Wednesday, don't you? <laughs> yes, that's exactly correct. By the way, could it be somebody from the show Surviving the Cut? Enter the intense world of military special forces training? That's I'm looking right at their lineup here. He does a little bit look a little bit like John from John and Kate Plus Eight. He does. Apparently, he, does. he wants his own show. Yeah, and he's a little. That would happy. be fabulous. <laughs> well, Jeff, thank yeah. you very much. Keep us posted. Thank you very much. All right, we'll thank do you. with this report. Jeff Solak signing off. Mm -hmm. Back to you in the studio. Thank you, gentlemen. Right. All right. Um, let me look at the shows here. There's somebody has somebody. So, see, here's my theory. I think it's hard to get in those buildings. Now you know how hard it is to get into our building. Right. So it may be. A co-worker deal. I'm going to guess... Maybe the two tanks were jetpack and he flew in. No, he made that up, I think. Hmm. Um, I'm going to guess <laughs> lover's, lover's quarrel or something. What kind or of reporter getting... makes shit up? What is that about? Well, I don't know. I, you know it's, it's not a... Lover's real... quarrel? <clears throat> lover's triangle? Or, or getting fired kind of a thing. See, here's know? my theory. A... You think... Wait a minute. What? You think one of the... Um, the guys from American Loggers, the one of the brothers, the two brothers, the <laughs> Pelletier brothers. You, th you think maybe that oh, family that. tradition of harvesting timber in the Maine wilderness, something's gone wrong? Save the planet, the Discovery yeah. Channel. You think it could be Les Stroud? It could, it could be. It's a new survival show. He visits the true masters of survival. Well, uh, I yeah. think, this is what I think. A, I don't mm -hmm. think he's Asian. I think it's a stoner who's pissed off that Monster Garage is not coming back on the air. That's my take. Could it be somebody from the colony where 10 survivors make it through a global catastrophe? I've thought of taking that show hostage a few times. It's awful. <laughs> How about Mike Rowe has just flipped out from Dirty Jobs? <laughs> right. Completely gone it's nuts. a new version, Scariest Jobs. All right, or Mike, you you're going to be a hostage negotiator. Ready? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. It could be something between Dave Canterbury and Coney London. <laughs> you know who they are? No. Is what that show man, is? woman, wild? No, they're on Dual Survivor. Oh, yeah. Oh, those two. They are Nick. dumped into scenarios that even though you may not think it could happen, it could happen to anyone. One of those assholes doesn't wear shoes mm -hmm. ever. So, like, they're in the jungle and the one I, guy has hiking boots on. I watched it the other night. He has yeah. to wait for the other guy as yeah. he tiptoes his way through everything. Um, it could be John Barry or Brad Clinge. They could have gone nuts. <laughs> They're the host of Ghost Lab. <laughs> Ghost Lab. Wait a minute now. Howie of Howie Tech. No relation to uh, Howie from Howie they, Felter. He's Nash. a... He's a welder that builds really cool machines. Maybe he's gone nuts. Mm -hmm. Could be. The, there's um, a lot of lot of possible disgruntled people up there. Shady. Well, man, woman, wild there's is a lot a, of people. Yeah, that like to do a lot of harm to mm -hmm. other people, 
And this is no, no good. Yes, it is. Uh, Man, woman, wild. That's a special forces survival expert and his TV journalist wife get dropped in a remote spot. Boy, wouldn't you love to see them get in a fist fight? <laughs> Has anyone thought that this might be a Crips Bloods thing between them and Nat Geo? This could be somebody from National Geographic. Came well, to settle this once and for all. Uh, also, it could be the Verminators. <laughs> you know who they are? Yeah, the uh, the uh, exterminator guys or whatever. Or no, the... they they wipe out disgusting infestations. Right. The, by the way, the most disgusting you've ever seen. And it says here, try the bug quiz. Hold on a minute. In the middle of my report, I think we ought to try the bug quiz. Hold on a minute. From the Verminators. Okay. Um, take the quiz. Okay, you guys ready back there? Take yeah. the quiz. Question one. Okay, here we go. False. Next question. No. How long can a cockroach survive without its head? Three days. I'm uh, gonna no. say yeah. Two, uh, uh, one minute. It says one dollar. Now here are the answers. Oh, no, here are I the, the, the here are the here. No, here are the chances. It can't. One day, one week, or forever. I, I don't know either. I'm just at the. What do, what do we put? We, um, it can last a day without its head. I'm saying a week. <laughs> Garrett, three years. <laughs> You're saying a week. It can. What? It, it can't. A resident vermin expert says it can't. Well, wait a minute. Now. How do you think I feel? I'm having trouble voting. <laughs> um, okay. One one week. Okay, there we go. Correct! Yes! Wow! Yes. Oh. Roaches do asshole. not need their heads to breathe. They absorb oxygen through their bodies. They can survive, surely, a month without food. A headless cockroach will live about a week until it dies of thirst. Wow. Ooh. How many descendants can a single pair of rats produce in three years? 2,000, 20,000, 2 million, or 20 million? Wait a minute. How many descendants can a single pair of rats produce in 36 months? 20 million... Two million, twenty thousand, or two thousand. Christina, how many do you think? Um, I'll say the first one. What was that? Did the two thousand? Two thousand. No, the way, more than that. By the way, we're doing this as we wait for uh, a report from the uh, from the hostage situation. Don't you wish CNN had a quiz where they were waiting for more information? <laughs> Jay, what do you think, Ira? Um, I take this mic hostage every time I'm on. <laughs> I know you do. Uh, Garrett, what do you think? Two uh, million. Two million. Shuley, what do you think? Twenty thousand. I'm with Shuley. Twenty-five thousand. Twenty thousand. Okay, 20, here we go. Or E. Thirty-five thousand. <laughs> the answer is twenty million. Ew. Jesus. That is. You know what? That, I can't wait to watch this show. <laughs> A single pair of rats can produce twenty million. Descendants. They must be Mexican rats. <laughs> a mouse can squ can squeeze through a hole as small as a dime, a nickel, a quarter, a half dollar. Well, then call my penis the mouse. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Christina? Dime. 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 Yeah, it's dime. dime. I'm pretty. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, because they make themselves very, very small. They have no bones, right? Uh, yeah, rats, on the other hand, they can squeeze through a um, a quarter size. No, m mice have bones. Uh, well, something that they can, they're, they're flexible or something. They can, you know, you know. What's that? <laughs> Shut up. Somebody told me that one. How can a human contract a rodent-borne disease through a rodent bite by consuming food that has rodent feces or urine on it? By being bitten by a flea tick or mite that may have fed off of an infected rodent, or all of the above. All of the above. All of the above. All the, everybody. Can everybody, I just say one thing? During this right. quiz, I wish yes. I was in the Discovery Channel building right now. <laughs> all right. Well, we'll leave the quiz. But it's pretty good. Pretty good. I have it's, the uh, actual mm -hmm. answer about what show he is mad about. Oh, you do really know? Yeah. What is it? Mad about you? <laughs> well, no, hold on. Hold, what, oh. hold on. Oh. Hold on. Is that it? 
We'll be right back. But that's not, I, I, I know what show he's upset with, James. What did you say, Garrett? What show is he upset but about? But that, that doesn't make sense, Garrett, because it's not on that channel. It's not on Discovery. What is he upset about, Garrett? It's Unless, oh, Discovery, okay, right? like Discovery, Discovery owns... Green or whatever. Does or... Discovery own Animal Planet as well? Hold on a second. I didn't hear what you said. Whale Wars. That's not true. Sources are saying the suspect is allegedly upset about the documentary called Whale Wars. Oh, he's Japanese. He was arrested in 2008 for disorderly conduct and littering on the grounds of the building. Oh, way mm-hmm. to save the planet, And he's been bag. out protesting there for uh, a few years, several so years. So he is Japanese, and he is sick of them saying bad shit about the Japanese. I'll be damned. Boy, I'll tell you, I feel his pain. Can you imagine every time a person sees you and you have slant eyes, they go like this. Why don't you stop killing those whales? Whale killer! Wow. I didn't hear. You know what I heard in the background? I heard this. (laughs) (laughs) I swear to God, that's all I heard. I'm going to tell you the show. (laughs) And then then you went like this. I always heard. I said, (laughs) what was it? Meanwhile, so, we all speak Garrett. We're like, ah. Uh. So a guy, <laughs> let's go to Jeremy of Florida. Uh, Jeremy, it's Jay Thomas. Have you heard uh, that it's a guy from a protester against whale wars? Have you heard this? I haven't heard the whale wars part. Uh, they were saying that he was disgusted with uh, humans and uh, that mm-hmm. human babies are filth and people shouldn't breed because humans uh, breed more war. Wow! So he's That's against he's against humans. Sounds like a new member of the Miserable Men That's show. That's what I heard on uh, <laughs> CNN. Hey, wait a minute, he doesn't look like Rev Bob Levy, does he? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, his name's huh? uh, James Lee. Wow, uh, yeah. James Lee. So uh, Lee is sounds to be Chinese, not uh, it so does he. Sound yeah, Chinese. I wonder if he's angry about uh, whale wars though, or that was just a rumor. Um, okay, thank you very much, Jeremy of Florida. Now, of Thanks, course, Jay. we have a uh, uh, go ahead. Some late breaking news. Uh, play the play the whole thing again, so we know who's giving us the news. Please, Garrett. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We want to hear exactly who's. Good evening, Mister and Mrs. America, and all the ships at sea. It's the Dumbo Radio Network. That's what I'm talking about. Let's join our special reporter in the field, Jeff Furlock. Huh? Jeff Furlock. Jeff Furlock. Jeff Furlock. Uh-huh. The gentleman uh, in question is actually of Asian descent. He is not Japanese. Mm-hmm. He is Chinese and getting sick of being uh, mistaken for a Japanese man. So the tanks in question are filled with soy sauce. Ah. With this report, this is Jeff Frola <laughs> reporting live from the scene. Back to we you in went, the studio. We went through all of that for that <laughs> shitty line. All right, stay where you are. Shut, <laughs> shut up. Shut <laughs> up. Jesus. Hey, Jude. Don't make it bad. Take a sad song. Now, Ira, where do you rank this in the songs of all time? Number three. Number three of all time is Hey Jude. right. Before this show is over, we will count down Ira's top three songs of all time. Uh, let's listen to one more. Hey Jude. It's not Jude, it's Jude. Hey Jude. While you're enjoying this musical interlude, let me remind you, an Asian man named Mr. Lee uh, is uh, holding somebody hostage at the Discovery Channel. And I know you want to turn over to uh, one of the news channels and find out, but we will keep you um, abreast. I, of exactly what happens. We will fool around as if we're having a normal show. I think Ira has an update for us. But if there, when and if there is an update, we are he, going to he break in. ran into what? the building mm-hmm. and yelled, Chinese, Japanese, mm-hmm. dirty knees, mm-hmm. look at these. <laughs> <laughs> All of the reports are coming out now cannot be... <laughs> But they're still coming in. (laughs) They're coming in. But we will break in to our regular programming to bring you the latest uh, news on the hostage situation at the Discovery Channel building in in Maryland. Okay? So, and then Ira's going to give you the the, uh, music. 
Now, you know, while we're waiting for the breaking news, and before we have the guy on uh, who wrote the book, um, Acting White, um, I had a hot, I've told this on the air, but no one can remember it. I was at Power 106 in LA, and I hadn't been there but a month or so. And this song, Candy, was a big hit song, like a big dance song. And this nut that listened to the radio station, this guy named George, who was from like the Balkans, he envisioned that I had his wife in the studio. And her name was Candy. What we think it was was it was a prostitute that he was screwing or something. But when he would hear the song Candy, if he wasn't on his medicine, Mm-mm. he would go nuts. That's like the Stooges episode when they would... When Larry... I know what song Candy Girl. No, no, not Candy Girl. It was the... It was the. You ever see that Three Stooges episode where whenever Larry played the violin, Curly would start beating the shit out of everything? That's right. That's... <laughs> it was Candy, like kind of a dance song. I don't know who did it. Anyway. I like Candy. That no. One? No. Mm-mm. Well, that's um, to the game. This is it right here. Candy by Cameo. That's exactly right. 87. That was me, right. I hadn't been at the station very long. I just got there, right? Yeah. Oh, you so know I, what? You know, yeah. This, uh, this guy posted, he, he, he posted his list of demands for Discovery Channel. <laughs> Do you have them? Yeah. Long. Well, we got to break into regular programming. Yeah, it's long, though. Let's break into regular programming, and let's go to Shuley with the uh, hostage taker's demands. I'm just going to read it uh, the way he wrote it. Wrist of demands. The Discovery Channel and... <laughs> I'm playing popcorn. <laughs> the Discovery Channel and its affiliate channels must have daily television programs at primetime slots based on Daniel Quinn's My Ishmael. Pages 207 to 212, where solutions to save the planet would be done in the same way as the Industrial Revolution was done. By people building on each other's inventive ideas. Forces must be given on how people can live without giving birth to more filthy human children. Mm. Since those are new additions and continued pollution in this world. A game show format. <laughs> <laughs> contest what? would be yeah this guy wants a game show a game oh, show come on no really come on yeah and it's like that's this i'm not even halfway through number 1 demand he wants a game he's holding people hostage not just for that one show but now a game show bring family feud back no no <laughs> All programs on Discovery Channel, Discovery Health, TLC, must stop encouraging the birth of any more parasitic human uh, infants. You know, I will say this. they got to get rid of that I didn't know I was pregnant show, for sure. That Wait a minute. They need to t- they need to bring him down the hall because yeah. Discovery has a show called Pitch Men where <laughs> you follow infomercial superstars right. as they look for the next big thing. Now they're looking for another co-host for that show since if Billy Mays dis- killed if over. Dis- if Discovery Channel has any balls at all, they will give this guy a show. Just put him Wait, on now. Give him a show. Bring the cameras in right now. Unbelievable. What See, else does I he want? I think they got him. I'm just Wait yeah. a minute. Ira, breaking news. Do they have him, Ira? I think so. Well, in Ira's news, they got him, but according to CNN... Are they showing him being grabbed? They, no. Uh, they showed um, a website, I guess their website, with an article saying that he has been arrested. Yeah, he's from this uh, Save the Planet something. That's the group he's associated with. The Verminators apparently sprayed something under the door, <laughs> and he began choking and coughing. CNN and arre- reports the guys yeah. from Save the group Save the Planet, and the demands are posted on their site. Wow. So he's going to go to jail for, I mean, kidnapping is a federal offense. So you thought it was filthy outside of jail. <laughs> oh, my God. He ain't going to have wait. any kids to worry about in there, that's yeah. for sure. Oh, he's done. He's done for. So they grabbed him. It's all over. And, I'd lo- well, fi- of course, the person that was taken hostage uh, will have post-traumatic, whatever it is, syndrome, and then they'll write a book. So this is going to go on and on and on. All right? Jay, uh, come- yes, Ira? I got regards for you. Really? Who sent you regards? I, I mean, was at uh, Dwayne Reed's drugstore. <laughs> the person at the drugstore? On 57th Street in Manhattan. Yeah. And who, who, sent me re- who, who sent me regards? A uh, famous lady, Sue O'Neill. Oh, come on. I talked about her yesterday. Sue O'Neill is doing one. No, no, no. That's the DJ. I thought 
What's the woman from TV? By the way, the hostage situation at the Discovery Channel in, um, is it Virginia or Delaware? Where Maryland. Maryland. In Maryland. I'm close. I'm in the area. In Maryland. Uh, apparently the man has been arrested. I don't know he- that, Jay. I have yet to see something flash up there saying that, that he's in custody. Well, we, we heard he might. Uh, Garrett, did you say he was in custody yet? Or he, did I, the band? I, I saw one thing on CNN, but um, it still says unconfirmed number of people being held. So Wow. Uh, His demands are online, and uh, we're going to read them. Uh, He wants all childbirth to stop, but he wants a very... He wants... What does he say about the show? Oh, Um, look at this. Demand number four. Yeah. Do you want a larger penis? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm on the wrong (laughs) site. Why can't you? Why can't you? No, no. No, no. You know what? This is serious. All right. right, This is no time for jokes. No time for that. We have a serious guy coming on. Um, the, 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 says, uh, uh, stop all shows glorifying human birthing on all your channels and on TLC. Stop wow. future weapons shows. You know, that show future weapons, which is awesome. Mm-hmm. And he's really a member of a, of a real, uh, like a lobbyist group. What is it? Earth? Save Earth the first? planet. I think Save the planet. Wow. Are they, they the should, ones that sell the, 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 the liquid detergent him, and the washing powder and all that? Kick his balls in. No, Ira, you know what, Ira? Should. Ira, you're you a conservative. Calm down, buddy. Yeah, you're a conservative bent right now. It's not, not working. Um, they ought to send that ball-headed guy in there from uh, Mythbusters, have him hog time and shoot him with a potato gun. <laughs> that <laughs> mustache is Take bulletproof. Mustache. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. It's a Kevlar mustache. Remember, now we'll break into normal programming whenever we have anything. You have no reason to turn away, uh, and we think CNN ought to do the same thing, and Fox, all of them, because instead of just showing the person or the building and you can't see anything, go away, fool around for a while, have some guests, and then break in. You know, they're frightened of new regular news when there's a real, you know, tragedy or crisis out there, and I've, I'm against that. Uh, let's go to Stuart Buck. Uh, go to stuartbuck.com. Acting White, the Ironic Legacy of Desegregation. Um, hey, uh, Stuart, welcome to the Jay Thomas Show. How are you? Good afternoon, Doing Stuart. Great. Thanks. Thanks for yeah. having me. All right, hey, back Stuart. Him up. Back him up. Now, Stuart, as soon as you, I saw the title, Acting White, and I read the reviews and everything else, um, you know, you had the same job that Barack Obama had at Harvard. Weren't you the editor of the... Of the, um, of the well, I, w- I was an editor, but not the editor in chief, which is what uh, Obama uh, did when. He oh, was. he was the a bigger deal. Right, he was the he was the first black editor in chief. So he, yeah, he was in charge of of all the other uh, mere editors. So we we had two. I uh, we had a guy who's from South Africa said that um, so many people in in uh, black America accused him of acting white that he's got eighty percent white friends now. And then I was saying, my friend Shuli is Jewish, I was saying that the, Jew, that the Jews maybe have a longer period of enslavement and personal, I guess, people putting you down like the beaten child, that maybe maybe uh, uh, black Americans will come through it, but it's going to just take another, I don't know what, 500 years or whatever before there's there's equality. That That's what we were thinking. It's just that they haven't been enslaved long enough. You know what I'm saying? Well, hopefully it won't take quite that long. But. What I meant was this, not enslaved, but like the hey. Jews were an enslaved race for, God, a thousand years, you know? And right. Cons- and considered, you know, dregs of the earth. No one now says a Jewish person isn't education bent and, you know, you know, they may dislike them as a group of individuals, but they don't put them down as, a, as uneducated or, you know, you know what I'm saying? Right. Well, I mean, it's interesting. I think there was a time early in the... Uh, 20th century or before when people did ha- kind of have a stereotype of, of some Jewish immigrants as less intelligent. But um, I think they were able to overcome that, and I think that does show perhaps the value of cultural uh, uh, achievement and, and what, what people can achieve when they are particularly striving for that. So what are we supposed to do? Um, uh, and I'm a guy that's a Democrat and a liberal, and, and I believe in... Um, um, you know, I mean, there's, there's just a group of individuals that, for whatever reason, and I'm from the South, did not get the same chances that we got. And so I am for affirmative action. It doesn't, it doesn't bother me. Mm-hmm. Does it bother you? Um, not, not particularly. Um, 
yeah it's not it's not really an issue that I really address or um, uh, really uh, care that much about I guess but in your well, book I, acting I, white about the um, that that, that um, I I, guess, I see desegregation and education you know have not helped African Americans to achieve um, academically what what they should be able to Right. Well, I, I would just restate that a little bit to say that um, what I'm arguing is that desegregation was an overall benefit because, I mean, you had a, a race of people of people that were basically oppressed and told, you know, you, you can't come to the same schools, you can't drink from the same water fountains, et cetera, et cetera. And, of course, that harms uh, people to be basically shut off from the mainstream of society. And so getting rid of segregation is uh, overall just a, a wonderful thing. However... I'm just saying there there might have been a, a, a kind of ironic effect or side effect in in one way, which is that uh, some black kids, when they were brought into white schools, um, ended up somehow feeling kind of alienated from the world of school. They ended up thinking uh, that the school is being run uh, by white people and for the benefit of whites. They ended up seeing a lot of advanced classes where it looked like they were all white, and uh, you know the principal was white. And it started to feel like, well, you know, if, if I go off and try to achieve in this realm, then that's almost a, the equivalent of trying to be white myself. Um, whereas you didn't see that attitude in the uh, former days of the all-black segregated school. And again, I'm not saying the all-black segregated school was a good thing in and of itself. Um, it's just that in that day, and I heard this time and time again, people said to me, you know, I, I never thought of education as acting quiet back then. There there weren't even any white people around for me to act like. Um, so yeah, I, but I, you I, know what? i got to tell you, <laughs> you uh, what you're saying is you got uh, segregation, right? And so a, a greater group of black individuals comes out better educated, and, and, and among their own you know peers, they feel great. Then they got out, lawyers, doctors, and they couldn't get a job because the world was run by white people. Mm-hmm. Well, that's the problem, and I and I agree with you that that there were probably a, uh, a greater number of individuals. Their families were more interested in them getting education, and now now that everybody's you know it, they can't, still can't get a job, you'll come out to be a PhD. I mean, how many black doctors do you think I ever saw in my life when I was a kid? Cliff Huxtable. No, I saw Cliff Huxtable. That's about, that's right. Yeah. So so, Doctor Doctor J. That's right, and that's, that's it. So I I don't disagree with you, but once they got all this wonderful education and didn't feel put down or trying to act white, they couldn't get a job. So segregation. That's the problem with segregation. Is it? Oh sure, yeah, I, I yeah. agree. I mean, I, I'm absolutely not saying that segregation uh, was was a good thing, or, or I mean, absolutely, it had. Yeah, many many horrible effects. I'm just I'm just saying that the actually what I'm almost getting at is the way desegregation was accomplished um, in, in the school environment because uh, all across the South, a lot of black schools ended up being destroyed um, or shut down or you know converted into maybe a community center or just something else uh, rather than uh, introducing white kids into a black school, for example. So. So when, when local school boards across the South had to desegregate, they usually would just break up the black school, you know, turn the building into something else or tear it down, and then send the black kids off to a white school. And what that meant was that, you know, for, for a lot of black kids, they suddenly found themselves feeling out of place, I mean, especially in the initial days of desegregation. You know, like in Little Rock, the 101st Airborne had to come in and escort the black kids to school because they right. were... Right. I, I mean, we all know this, but your book, Acting White, The Ironic Legacy of Desegregation, that's because the white people were bad people. Evil. I lived there. Evil. Bad. Like South Boston. Right. They, they would kill you. They would strangle you. They would burn black your black school. They they would burn your house down. So what I'm trying to get at is when you have a book acting white. I mean, first of all, you're going to get all these horrible emails from black people, don't you think? I mean, they're not going to they're not going to think this is this is interesting. Well, you know, I mean, the response I've gotten so far has been surprisingly uh, mm-hmm. positive. Um, in fact, that uh, it's it's interesting. I mean, I, I I was on a radio show the other day with a guy who seemed to be a kind of black power activist and he was all he was all into what i was saying he, he totally agreed with it um so it, it's kind of interesting there there's some people who look at my book and think wow i'm a radical liberal who's you know cr- criticizing 
uh, schools for for not being friendly to black people, and uh, you know that they see that as where I'm coming from. It's and, and then other people think, oh, you're a radical conservative because we we thought you're the conservative. We all we all thought you were the conservative. Okay, well, I'm I'm just saying a lot of people seem to see in this book kind of what they're looking for in a way. They, they see it through their own lens, and they they. It's like uh, dream interpretation. <laughs> okay. <That's right. laughs> You want to say All right. <laughs> but I'll tell you, acting acting white, I mean I'm I'm glad you're here. It's gonna it's a tough one for you to explain and and so what what before we say goodbye, tell me exactly Well somebody on the miserable dot com brings up a good point. Are you yeah. sure that you, maybe you had a hearing problem? They were just telling you to act right instead <laughs> of act white? Uh, can I be honest with you? I think what's terrible is bullying and acting white. There was a, a, a thing in South Carolina where these kids got beat up, and then they sued the school because they weren't protected because mm. these black kids said they were beaten up for acting white, right, and ostracized. Mm-hmm. And so it was down in South Carolina. So then I, I saw the, the, the title of, of your book. I thought you were going to say the blacks shouldn't tell smart people that they're acting white. I mean, is that right. really what you're saying? Well, I mean, the book isn't about that so much. I mean, I would agree. I mean, that, you know, it it doesn't help to to try to characterize academic achievement as somehow betraying your race or somehow belonging, you're belonging to another race if you try to excel. Um, But at the same time, I think it, I actually say in the book that I would defend the acting right criticism in a way as being almost kind of natural, natural in the same sense that. Uh, you know, eating a lot of sugar is natural because th- there are just historical reasons why you might want to eat a lot of sugar. You know, historically, if, if there weren't many calories around, you ate whatever was sweet and you tried to get as many calories as you could. Well, in the in the desegregated school environment, it's natural for a group of people that has been oppressed and it suddenly feels like they're in a minority in a, in a hostile sort of environment in many places. It's natural for them to want to stick together and you know, to try to make sure that they all can, you know, hang hang in there together and not necessarily go off and try to be with someone who looks like the oppressors. And so, you know, in, in the desegregated environment, you know, all of a sudden the black principals are no longer there. Uh, the number of black principals in the South was just decimated a- after desegregation because, you know. No, I, I know. I got all that. What I'm saying is, is, and, I, yeah, I, I guess what I'm missing here is is if there was a one sentence thing after you read it, as a black person, what 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 should you do? Um, it's it's hard to say what you should do. I mean, I, I know from having my own kids, it's it's hard enough to change children's attitudes about homework and academics, uh, even if they're your own children living in your house. So, um, mm-hmm. so it, you know, it's very hard to try to change anybody else's attitudes. But I, I would just. Uh, you know, I point to in the book to some some charter schools like KIPP, Knowledge is Power program. Uh, the KIPP schools, with, they're able to, you know, go into high minority neighborhoods and and really focus on producing a culture of looking for academic excellence. And I, you know, examples like that, I think, you know, if you if you can have that cultural value of really trying to achieve and everybody pulling together towards that end, uh, I think that can really help people along. Well, uh, listen, uh, good luck with acting white. I have absolutely no confidence in the average uh, person. My kids go to public school. I have no confidence in the Stuart, average good luck person. To you. Yeah. Uh, I think good that luck people to you, are, Stuart. People are just mean as hell to each other. They're just, they're just mean. They're, they're, and then, uh, they are. They're mean to each yeah, other. And especially, like especially among the kids that are not in, AP or baccalaureate classes or whatever you you'll get those higher ranking whites blacks and hispanics and then down below it's like a friggin prison mm. you know, in most public schools yeah so yeah, yeah right. I, well, I do say in the book that it's, it's not a problem unique to black people that there are, there are whites as well that, that mm-hmm. uh, will attack someone for excelling too much in school uh, sure. it's just unfortunate all right thank you very much thank you Stuart buck all right. acting white thank you now, if you're going to write a book called Acting White, surely, I'm here. You've got to be as white as this guy was. You've got to be that white, like styrofoam cooler white. Yes. Now, could you tell me this guy has every degree in education, distinguished? Why is he doctor, so boring with every degree? I don't what, know. Jim. What was he saying? What was I the, have no? It's like it's like in a circle, the, right? 
that combined with the, uh, Charlie Brown's teacher Jay, talking. That's, I that's what I hear. Like I was up in the moon. <laughs> you found he made you feel like you were up in the moon. <laughs> yes. You know why doesn't he? Why didn't he have a thing in there? You know, like a, he should have had a like a a chapter. Hey, what's the deal with the way uh, black people walk across the street in front of your car? <laughs> right. You know, and ask them. Uh, you know, what what are you what, doing? Uh, it chapter to, four. Why do they all smoke menthols? I mean, something or other. I mean, uh, there's something where I'm like, I gotta read chapter four. <laughs> even the reviews weren't positive at all. One review, I don't even know. He how doesn't they... explain anything. I <laughs> wonder if his wife helped him with this. One review, and I don't even know how they spelled it. It just says, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Stuart and his wife, they have six children, two of which are black and from Haiti. Okay. Okay. So he's got kids and he... And so, I'm going to act Asian, Asian. Really? Who wants to be my hostage? When his two... <laughs> <laughs> when his two kids go off to school, Surely they're going to just like funny, Stuart. You know, <laughs> this is not funny. What this is oh, serious? Look, I'm now getting this scolded. Cough a bit. You know, there's a hostage Maybe you, sh- you shouldn't have read it. You then. think I'm going to take people hostage over here? No, I don't. Not no. Not you, you're a this. sweetheart. Shilly, read us another demand, would you please? Another sure. demand. Okay. This is from the uh, hostage taker who may or may not have been captured at the Discovery Channel. No, he was not captured. In, 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 um, I want to know how TMZ got these demands. They get everything. <laughs> the- they didn't go to TMZ. Yeah. These are from their oh, website. Yeah. These are from the, the, the demands are printed Take out from their website. Balls they should send I'm Lindsay not... Lindsay Lohan over there to cover this, you know? <laughs> uh, demand number six. I want the weatherman to clear his throat at least three times in an hour. Come on. Uh, develop shows. Wait, how are we going? Saving the planet means saving what's left of the non-human wildlife by decreasing the human population. That mean, you know what? I gotta say this. In all seriousness, reading this stuff, it doesn't look good for the hostages because this guy is it doesn't sound like he's like, oh, you know what? I had a brain fart. Sorry, let everybody go. <laughs> you know what? This you know is what else? Like, if uh, he wants to stop people from being born and from being on the planet, he may not think much of blowing away the group he's holding. Right, and the whole thing mm. with the whale wars and all that stuff. I mean, right. So yeah. he'd rather the whales be alive than the humans, first of all. Yeah. So he'd rather animals than man. Right. He's not leaving a lot of room for himself, you know. Here's a... Uh, wait, hold on. Where's the one I saw earlier? Wouldn't it be, it very wouldn't it be funny if you saw him and he, he hopped like a bunny and he thought he was a big rabbit or something? <laughs> Didn't think he was he's a dressed human? like those Furbies, those people who dress as animals? I've harpooned a few whales in my younger days. <laughs> All right, thank you. We don't need the, <laughs> We don't need We don't need the sex talk. We don't need all the sex talk. Um, give me one more of his uh, demands. You know what's funny about Shuley? You're you're like a follower of this guy all of a sudden. Shuley is wonderful. Thank you. I know he is. Thank yeah. you. Shuley is wonderful. Uh, hey Shuley, I have regards for for you. From on 11th Avenue, there's a guy that washes windshields. <laughs> yes, he's called my dad. All right, yeah, stop being a dick. Washing a windshield, he said. For every to. human born, mm-hmm. acres of wildlife forest uh, must be turned into there farmland. He is. There he is. There he is. Yeah, they got video of him at a protest getting arrested a while back. There's every right. human that's yeah. born, you have acres to have Acres of wildlife acre. forest must be turned into farmland in order to feed that new mm-hmm. addition. Over the course of 60 to 100 years... Of that new human's lifespan, this is at the expense of the forest creatures. All human uh, procreation and farming must cease. So he's kind of saying two different things. He's saying when the kid's born, mm-hmm. you know, you take the forest, turn it into farms. And well, no, wait a minute. No, wait a minute. No, no. He's he's saying, and if you want to have children. Oh, uh, okay. I see. He's giving us an. He's giving us an. I option. would rather have had him as a guest than the than the white guy. Tell me about it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, this come in. This has just come in. Now this is true. Um, Confederate flags have been put up in a lot of these Gulf towns in Louisiana where the workers are cleaning the beaches. One of them is Grand Isle, which is right at the tip of Louisiana, and then the well was I don't know fifty sixty miles away. 
Now, there are people, multiracial people that are on the beaches in those white outfits cleaning up the, they're still cleaning up. They, they went to a resident of, of Grand Isle and they asked her why there were so many Confederate flags since the BP workers, many Latino and blacks, began arriving to help out the mostly white town. I'd hate for Grand Isle, said Teresa Bunnies, Brunnies, uh, to become known as a racist community, but these flags are just our way of telling these strangers to clean up and keep moving. <laughs> oh, that's what that means. Yes. I got to tell you, <laughs> that's where I was raised. That's where, after they cleaned up Katrina, uh, mostly Latinos did the work, right? And they had these, um, burrito trucks, you know, these sand, these, uh, taco trucks and all. Yeah. Two years after the town was pretty much put back together, the city council outlawed taco trucks, burrito trucks. They thought that the Hispanics, once the trucks weren't there to feed them at lunchtime, would leave the area. I swear to God, that's a stupid thing. <laughs> if they, <laughs> you know, if they got rid of street meat, then there'd be no terrorism in New York City. You know, same deal. Well, guy's got a Facebook on his, uh, or what is that? Yeah, that's a MySpace. Boy, this guy's really crazy. He's still on MySpace. What, what does he say there? Let's say it's time for revolution. Wow. Yeah. This so does he not... still have them? Does he still have them? Yeah. Still got them. I okay. mean, he's still got a MySpace page. Of course, he's still going to hold on to the hostages. Now, you know, you, you just made fun of MySpace, and I know this Google, I mean, the uh, Facebook movie is supposed to be really good. We had the guy on that wrote the book. But I read that MySpace was about to get $900 million from Google, um, and everybody, I don't know anybody on MySpace. So is that over? Is that like done with? I don't know. I I have. I mean, MySpace has pretty much died out. You know, I can't imagine them. I can see them paying someone nine hundred million to take it off their hands at this. Right? Point. Maybe they would, but but it's it. And and uh, this guy at Facebook. Well, they just showed a close up of his page. He has one hundred and three friends. <laughs> that guy. That guy broke a hundred. He is going to have. No, but he's going to have more than that by tonight. Oh yeah. He'll have a, a oh, lot they more. gotta blow his balls apart. No, they're not. That's not that. That <laughs> wouldn't make good television. Sure yeah. A sperm whale mm -hmm. stained my pants. <laughs> sperm. <laughs> let's go. Let's have another report, please, Garrett. Before we go to break, please, another report. <laughs> After these Jeff bad jokes Perlman. and this shitty report, <laughs> I think we deserve what they pay us, Shirley. That's what I'm starting to think. No wonder. We keep wondering why they don't take Good better care of us. Gentlemen, the uh, yeah. gunman is not in custody as reported before, oh. but apparently the police have spoken to him. Right. And uh, Discovery Channel sister channel, um, TLC, turned down his pitch for a reality show about a family of Asian midgets with multiple obese children with 50-pound tumors who run a Sharpay rescue shelter that teaches the dogs how to build choppers out of cake batter. The show is going to be called Acting Yellow. And apparently, Marilyn Ogloud wonton trucks as well. This report Jesus from the scene is Jeff Furlock setting to you back in the studio. <laughs> I don't see how he... How do you read that much bad material and not take a breath? That's the most amazing thing about that, <clears throat> about that bit. Stay where you are. <laughs> the are you feeling depressed? Are you feeling down? Don't take a pill. Just gather round and listen to The Jay Thomas Show. I think we're all depressed. I really mean it. There is really something to be said the, the way you, you know, get over stuff. We, we work with Madison. She is positive that there is something wrong with her. I'm going to tell you now, there is absolutely nothing wrong with that woman. 
have you seen these commercials where the people are really depressed and they take a pill and they feel better? How would you like to be? Have you ever been around a person who takes a pill to feel better? Have you ever met anybody on lithium? There's a frozen smile on their faces all the time. And so, and if I get mentally weak, it's over. I mean it. Bullet to the head. See you later. If you're if you're going to kill yourself or jump off a bridge or put a bag over your head or whatever, I don't know why I don't. I just don't feel sorry for you. Oh, is that selfish? I Hell, I guess it is, but it sure is comforting, you know. Great Jeff Furlot has taken some of the wisdom of the Jay Thomas show and uh, poorly edited it, and then we play it back for you uh, right here. Bye. I tell you what, I feel like I'm missing something. It sounds like Shuley, Garrett, Christina, and I, the weatherman, are having an incredible time back in New York City. Uh, you know what, Ira? It is sunny here in California, but I'm looking at. Um, uh, the Weather Channel a few minutes ago. Yes, What's going on Jay. with the hurricane? Because let's look at that weather, uh, a which big, is... Yeah. There's a big rainstorm coming up the coast by a Friday, mm-hmm. and uh, his name is Earl. Earl now, is now, sweeping the winds around. How do they decide to name the hurricanes? How do they, how do they figure that out? Do you have any idea? Well, it's alphabetic. Oh, I see. So um, I missed the other ones. Was there Alan or Abby or? There was, was an there, Abby. Was there a Bob? Or a, there uh, was I mean, a Hurricane Bob. You mean already this year I, we've gotten A, B, C, D. We've had, this is our fifth hurricane. Does that, that sound? That's right. Really? What were the other four hurricanes? What were they? Uh, Bob, Alice, mm-hmm. Christina. Christina. What would be the D? D D, as in dog. Um, what was that hurricane? Bob. Ted, no, no, no. That, that's B. Carol. <laughs> no, no, Alice. Alice. No, no. That was a movie. <laughs> Bob, Ted, Carol, and Alice was a film. Um, who? What? What do you think the D hurricane? That'd was? be impressive. Though. The hurricane would be <laughs> Dawn. Okay. Oh. Hurricane. Dawn. My my agent came through town. <laughs> Big bag of fucking wind. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> a hurricane, a windstorm, yeah. rain right. is over 70 miles an hour winds. All right. <laughs> See, this is what I love about his weather. No weatherman does sound effects for no, his weather. No, he actually weather. made the sound of the 70 mile an hour winds. That you don't denotes. see Roker doing that shit. No, you don't. No, hack, you don't. That hack. <clears throat> He's too busy acting white. <laughs> Yeah, how many lockers was he stuffed in? Yeah, you know what? When he was a kid, he called himself the White Tornado. Okay. Jay, now, yes. th- now, what is it? Earl? Hurricane Earl. The I know. Windswept Earl. Yeah. By Friday, I am sending this storm out to a goddamn sea. Well, okay, now. He not only tells you the weather, but when the storm comes close to hurting you, he turns the storm away. It's like having Superman that as a weatherman. Right. It's like Zeus over that here. Yeah, right. unbelievable. Okay. Now, surely, um, this I man stuff. just came in, uh, oh. over the wire, Jay. Well, yes, from the guy that's holding the hostages the at the Discovery Channel. Break into normal programming. Go ahead. What is it? Oh, I thought we were waiting for a break-in theme. No, I don't oh, have that. Do uh, we have a break-in theme? How about, Garrett, just uh, the sound of glass breaking when, you, <laughs> when you're breaking news. Just anything breaking. Okay. They ought to do this at all the news channels. <laughs> just total live. Just know. crash. Right. Like like Oprah sitting there talking. They go, I'm sorry. Oh, let's talk about the, you know, just go right. <laughs> just all over the place. Right in the middle of her, like, giving away a Volkswagen or something. Just uh, demand number 8A. What a week. Breaking, breaking news. news. Breaking news. <laughs> breaking. breaking news. Demand now, here's eight. our reporter from Howard 100 News, Shuley. Demand 8A from the uh, from the gunman. Somebody please take my MySpace profile down. I can't figure out how to do it. All right. You've been listening to Breaking News. <laughs> now. <laughs> You, you were. <laughs> That's popping news, Gary. You know it's you different. Know, 
You know what? Christina sounds like a broad at the end of a bar. Somewhere. Oh, yeah. You know, that's you know, a, you're sitting that's a there. gettable laugh right there. You know what? There's, there'll be four or five of us and, and there's a girl by herself and she'll start laughing her asses off. And buddy, that's a night for me. You Every see? guy turns around and like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then we think whoever Pump the guy is, primed. is, whoever the guy is that's going to sit next to that's a lucky man. Now, you were discriminated against over the weekend. I swear that I thought you were one of these. You know, they say the two guys they arrested that they thought might be terrorists. Mm-hmm. And did you, they aren't. Whoopsie the case. guy said that when he travels, he always tapes, this is true, four cell phones to his Pepto-Bismol bottle. What the fuck? That, that's right. He had these telephones taped to a Pepto-Bismol bottle. Then he had box cutters and other stuff wrapped in tape also except he didn't go to his destination he went directly to Amsterdam but didn't end up I'm not kidding you it was really weird and they're going to let them go you read about these two guys they arrested them I think in Amsterdam I think no I I had my own things going on this weekend what happened to you this weekend so I went out to uh, LA um to uh to do some Emmy coverage for for Howard for ask some red carpet questions and you didn't call me well I was literally there Sunday and left Monday so and uh, and I worked and then that was it that was it that's all you did was work well I went to Fatburger when I landed I took a cab from my hotel <laughs> but uh <laughs> only top priorities for me so I get out there I do the thing I get to the airport I get on the flight and you know, the flight sold out, and I got one seat in the middle of a row. So I'm. And you're going to fly all the way across the country, right? In the middle seat. Why didn't you just, you know, what? Just call them and go. Look, there are no seats. I got bumped. Do some bullshit thing and fly in comfort. So weird. Whatever. Look, I just they're going to catch you. No, no but, catch but I you. had all the audio. I had the video. I had to get it back so they could put uh, it on this week. You know. All I was, right. I was also the drug mule as well. You should you should have taped it to the Pepto Bismol bottle. <laughs> so right back. So uh, so I go. Uh, I get in the seat. Ira's not the only one that does sound effects, Garrett. <laughs> Just like that. And uh, and and sure enough, my buddies who I'm going to be sitting uh, in. So between. far, this story and the guy who wrote acting white pretty close. Well, he interrupted both of us the whole fucking time, so it makes sense. So I go to the seat, I sit down, and sure enough, who comes walking up but a married couple, guy's a rabbi, he's like 300 pounds, and his wife. And right away I say to him, I go... On the either side of you? Yeah. But before they even sit down, I said, would you two like to sit together? (laughs) I said... I I almost spit my tea out. I heard it. I heard it. I almost spit my tea (laughs) all over the equipment. I go, would you two like to sit together? I have no problem being in the aisle or the window. And the wife looks at me and she goes, he prefers the aisle and I like the window. So I said, all right. So I figure, fuck it. I'm in for the long haul. I'll sleep once we take off. You know, I got no problem sleeping on planes. So the woman sits down. All of a sudden, she starts opening up these bags of food that she brought with her, which fucking stink. Now, I've been around Israeli food my whole life. I've never smelled anything oh, like this. God. It reeks. He, The rabbi sitting next to me, he's got no deodorant on. He reeks, right? He's like, shalom, oh, wait, shalom, wait, no, wait, wait a second. Hold on one second. Hold on. They can't bring food from home. So where did they get that food? She had it in little Ziploc bags. She had some sort of, uh, 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 she had potato chips that, uh, like, if they mix shit and chips, <laughs> this is the brand. No, but you brought. know what? They, but, but they had to buy them in the, um, they were in no, like, no, chip I think bag. You could bring food. Yeah, you, you can, cannot. It's, it's liquids. Yeah, it's, it's liquids. Just liquids. I didn't think you could bring food. I thought they made you throw all that away. But she had them in the proper little baggies. She had little that... Ziploc baggies, that see-through, so she could show them at security. So probably. all of this shit food went through the, yeah. the x-ray machine. So I got B.O. on one side and, and beard funk. And... Why don't those 
uh, Orthodox Jews with the uh, with the outfits. Why don't they bathe? I don't. I don't it. know, man. I don't know, but I have yet to meet one of those dudes that does. Can you reach. imagine if we were if you were a black guy and I were to say anything like that about a black person, the building would cave in. But we know this about these Orthodox Jewish guys. You can smell them on Forty Seventh Street. You can. You, you, that's you how can. you know where the Diamond District is. And I'm saying this as some religious thing. Is it that you can't because of the Torah not have deodorant? Yeah, or? God wants us all to smell like shit, apparently, in the, all right. uh, in the Torah. Well, that, you know what? God had his reasons. Exactly. Right. Okay. He was a big jokester, that guy. Yes. Uh, so I'm sitting there, and I'm like, all right, you know what? I just want to get to sleep. I just want to take off. So once we take off, I'm, I pass out. Like 30, 20 minutes into me sleeping, I get this on my shoulder. I open my eyes, and it's the wife, and I have to go to the bathroom. So he's got to get up. I got to get up. We both move out of the row. She's going, and now I'm pissed, because now I know there's no way I'm going to fall back asleep. And it's, Well, the woman had to pee. All right. She could have sat next to her fucking husband and given me the window, and she could have peed all goddamn day and night. So you don't pee when you fly? I don't. All right. I don't. I, so I, far, I'm, I'm on the so far I'm on the stinky Jew side. Okay, so she comes back. She Which gets, one is that? <laughs> <laughs> she comes back. The one with the small dick like me. Okay, yeah, you right. like that? There you go. She comes back, gets in her seat. I get in the middle seat. Stinky McRabbi Stinkyson gets in his seat, and uh, and I'm just sitting there flipping the channels on the TV. I'm pissed. I got my headphones on. Now, this rabbi keeps getting up every five minutes, and he's one of those guys that when he gets up, he grabs onto the chair in front of him. So the guy in front of him is almost, like, reclined. like, like Of course. Pulls you straight back. Yeah. And this guy gets up and decides to walk around the aisle of a totally sold-out flight. If Michael Locking Bolton was... I, I yeah. sat behind a Michael Bolton guy, kind of, with that long hair. Yeah. And every time I'd grab, I'd pull his hair a little bit. <laughs> this guy would get... So, oh, oh, God! <laughs> so so he keeps moving around every five minutes. And, and I just... I got my face. I'm so focused on TV and finding something to, to calm me down. Out of the corner of my eye, all of a sudden appears a baby. Maybe five, six month old baby. And I look, and the rabbi has his arms extended towards me with the baby in his hands. And, and I see him, he's talking to me, and I can't hear him because I got my headphones on. So I take the headphone out, and this guy goes, Could you hand her the baby? Now he wants me to transfer this fucking kid to his wife, which by the way, the kid's not theirs. They didn't have it when they sat down. Wait a second. They sat down childless. Yeah. Where did the child come from? Well, apparently there was another stinky Jew a few rows up that did have a kid, had numerous kids. And let me, can I just throw this out there? If you can't control one, stop shitting them out, okay? Jesus. They got three of them running around the fucking plane. He comes back with the youngest one, and he says, can you hand her the baby? And as I'm about to answer him, his wife goes, just hold the baby for to me, saying, just hold the baby while I get situated. And now, whatever was brewing and boiling, it just erupted. And I look at the guy and I said, no offense, but if I wanted to hold a kid, I would have brought my kid on this flight. Did you say some Hebrew things so they would know you were one of the tribesmen? It's funny did you, you say that. Just listen. What, what word did you use? Because they are I'm going to tell you exactly signals. what I used. Just listen. So, so I said, you know, this is why I asked if you guys wanted to switch seats so we wouldn't be involved like this with each other. And the, the rabbi looks at his wife and says in Hebrew, he says, Zelamani Soneotam. Wait a minute. He didn't think you knew what he said. He had no clue. Oh, my God. So what, what did he so, say? All right. Hold it. I'll tell you what. Stay where you are. When we come back. I'll repeat it in Hebrew in case people are like, Zelamani Soneotam. We will find out what that means. Fantasy football fans, uh, I'm a part of the fantasy uh, channel at uh, SiriusXM, and I'm on SiriusXM Pickskin Pick'em. Garrett is my assistant coach, and can people go on and see our teams? Um, that is just for the um, for, for just no, us. No, where we pick 
the, the winners. That has nothing to do with fantasy. That's the one you've done over the last three or four years. Really? <laughs> hmm. You mean this isn't me on the Fantasy Channel? No. I didn't look at this. I'll have to look this over. I'll decide if I want to read it or not in a few <laughs> moments. Anyway, that's going to start. The season starts, uh, what, a week from this Thursday, the regular season? Yeah, they season. can go to uh, Sirius.com slash right. pigskin. Right. Play along with you. And what's the name of our team, you know? Our team does not have an... I think it's like the J. Thomases or something. Hmm. Catchy right. name. But did this you one? see Maurice Jones-Drew got a little hurt? Yes, he in did get last hurt. Game. Hmm. And I, you know what? I cursed him. Yeah, good. I, I said, I said, you know what? I'm not picking you because you're going to go down. We call that now, the Kendra curse. <laughs> uh, let's go back to Shuley. A few moments ago, he was trapped in between two Orthodox Jewish people, an older right. rabbi man. Um, a child entered. He was handed the child. He was asleep. He was awakened, and then the people after Shuley. What did you? What, what words did you say to them in English? I said to that when he asked me to hand hand the child, I said, uh, you know, mm-hmm. I'd rather not. I said I would bring my kid if I wanted to hold a kid, and and uh, and that's when he said to his wife, "Zelamani soneltam." You see, no one who speaks Hebrew would figure that a person who looks like Shuli would know what they were saying. But let's be honest: the list of things I could be is stops at number two. You know, there's not a lot of things he could mistake me for. He you didn't know? think you knew how to speak Hebrew. Right, maybe he thought I was Jewish, but he definitely didn't assume I was Israeli. That's what did sure. he? What say that again? I want to. And the way when you speak it, it sounds like such a beautiful language. Zelamani soneltam. Okay, hold on. Let's go around the horn and let's try and guess what we think it might mean, Garrett. <clears throat> okay. Can I take a guess? <laughs> no, you're. Oh, all right. I'm used to guessing. Say it one more time. Let me hear it. Zelama anisoneotam. Zelama. Ira's going to repeat it. Repeat it, Ira. Zelamante. Yeah. Zelamante is the producer of the Stern Show. Gary <laughs> Zelamante. Ira, Ira, what do you think it means, what was said to Shuli? It, it, means, was, a sh- it means a big schmo. <laughs> He's a big, <laughs> a big schmo. schmo. This guy's a schmo. Yeah. Christina, what do you think it meant? I'm going to shove this baby down his throat. I'm going to shove the baby down his throat. And uh, Garrett, what do you think it meant? Uh, I can't wait for you to sleep on the floor because you have your period. I think he was saying... I've never been so sorry that someone's relatives escaped the oven. <laughs> All would have been nicer than what he actually meant. What did he say? So that phrase, Zelamani Soneltam, yeah. translated in English means, that's why I hate them. Wow. Yeah. Whoa. Them <laughs> means anybody that's not Orthodox. Right, or not Jewish. Who knows what he thought I was? Right. So my fucking, my temperature, pow, goes right through. The, like, you ever see those movies, the thermometer, the thing pops out the top? Yeah, the cartoon, I love yeah. that one. Yeah, that's what happened to me. I turned to him, and what do you think, we've got to go around the horn again, what do you think I said to him? In Hebrew. In Hebrew. Hold on a minute. Oh, yes. Because that's how I wanted to unveil who the All fuck right. he just said that to. Say what you said to him in Hebrew. Say it. Lech tizayen ta'ima shilcha batachat. Oh, my God! You fat fuck! Uh, Ira, what did he just say? He said, get the fuck out here. And fuck in it, and fuck in it. Christina, what do you think he said? Um, Go fuck your father in the ass. No, it has fuck in it. What, did you, what do you think, Eric? Praise be Allah. All right. <laughs> what did you say? Say it again, please. Lech tizayen ta'ima shilcha batachat. That is not pretty. No. Okay. What no. did you say? What did you say? I looked at this guy after he said that and translate to English what I said was go fuck your mother in the ass. Oh, I was close. <laughs> Christina's the hey. winner. Hey. <laughs> and let me ask you a question. They're already white skinned because you never see an Orthodox in Bermuda shorts. Um, <laughs> where? What color did his face turn? His he I, I said that his eyes got like cartoon eyes like Roger Rabbit like they dropped like they flew out of his head and the wife go, you just hear like like she's waiting for the oxygen mask to drop down 
And, and my my buddy Mike in the newsroom said, the thing I should have done then is grab two beers, open the emergency <laughs> slide, and slide down the plane. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did. I spit all the fucking teeth. Oh, my and then, God. And then I told him oh. in English so, he oh. would, so there wouldn't be any confusion. Wait I, a second. No, no. Why would you say it in English? Well, I just, because, you know, I'm not like, Super great at at Hebrew because I don't speak it as much as I used so to. You so there's some stuff said, I forgot. I think there's a donkey in your shorts. You can have <laughs> no, I know, I mis- know. I listen. One thing I didn't forget is is saying "go fuck your mother in the ass." That's something you never forget as is an Israeli. Like a, is that an idiom that's used quite a bit there back in Israel? I think so. I mm-hmm. think so. Like yeah. your dad would know that saying. Oh yeah, in a second. And, and your mom? Did you share this story with your parents? Uh, yeah, I have. Great. Yeah, and well, so I say that, I say that to him in Hebrew. I say lech dizen I love it. And then and his eyes go Roger Rabbit, and and I look at him and I said, you might want to be careful what you say around certain people because you never know what they understand. And let me tell you something, Jay. The rest of that flight, no one had to piss, no one had a fucking baby over there. No one said a fucking word. I had my feet up, flipping channels, relaxing. I was the mayor of that fucking row. And it was the greatest four hours Did of my life. Did you have to sit back into the middle of the... Oh, yeah, um, I stayed right there. I'm like, you know what? Now you motherfuckers move. How you like that? I was trying to be nice. I was trying to get on one side of the stink. And then he brings this fucking kid over. Wow. And wants me, and, and, and the thing that pissed me off the most, it's, it's one thing, hand the kid to her. I said, ah, maybe I would have done that. But when she's taking her headphones off and adjusting her, her seat, and she goes, just hold the baby. Like, who the fuck are you? Who are you to tell me I got to hold this kid? And the kid was in midair, just being hung out. <laughs> yeah. <here. laughs> he had his arms stretched out, <laughs> just holding the kid. Wow. <laughs> And uh, wow. yeah, it's great. And my favorite part great is I, I get off the plane and I call my wife immediately, and and I go, "Honey, you're not going to believe this. I just told a rabbi to go fuck his mother in the ass." And my <laughs> wife goes, "What kind of flight were you on?" <laughs> I was on fuck your mother in the ass airlines. Now, if you had been on El Al or something, he probably wouldn't have done it. He would have known you spoke the thing. Yeah. I think completely shocked. But we should go around the horn again. What? What did he think I was? Because <laughs> the, the whole point. rest of the flight, that's all I was thinking about was like, the fuck did he think I was? I no, but but a non-believer is what he meant. Mm. A non-believer. That that's what or them meaning okay, white let's or. Go around the horn. Oh, let's go around the horn. <laughs> let's go around the horn. <laughs> all right, what do you think he thought, Ira? He thought truly wasn't terrorist. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I'm not beating that answer. Nobody can beat that one. <laughs> All right, take it out. That's it. You know what? You better break the glass on that one. Break the glass on that one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I got to check. We got some breaking news demand-wise. Uh, let's, let's read another demand. The hostage situation continues uh, unabated, as far as we know. At the Discovery Channel, we have been following this story for almost two Jay, hours. Jay, you yes, see our, what the guy wants? What does he, he want? He wants his own god darn show. I don't know if that's it or not. Uh, but they, uh, truly, he has these demands up on TMZ. Um, go ahead. Uh, demand number 10. Mm-hmm. I want Jay Thomas's fantasy football team to be named Dungeons and Football. <laughs> Would you read a real um, thing, please? I quit fooling around. Sorry. Let me just Stop cue this. Around. I mean, we're talking about a kidnapping at a major channel that I might have a show at. That's uh, the point. Number nine, a week-long mud wrestling special between ice road truckers and deadliest catch captains with cutaways to home videos of Israelis crying over Captain Phil dying. That's straight off TMZ. Specific. Yeah. Uh, by thorough. the way, uh, the actor John Cusack. <laughs> You're the only one who said about, it that way. <clears throat> that's how do you say it? Cusack. Cusack. Did you see what he said about uh, Newt Gingrich and Dick Army and everybody at Fox News on his Twitter rampage? What? I am for a satanic Delft cult center <laughs> to be housed at Fox News headquarters <laughs> and outside of the office. 
<laughs> or Dick Army and Newt Gingrich and all the GOP welfare freaks. <laughs> didn't he do in movies say anything? I mean, it didn't even make any sense what he was saying. I am for a satanic death cult center at Fox News headquarters with Dick Army, Newt Gingrich, and all the GOP welfare freaks. He tweeted that. Good for him. We haven't heard from him in a little while. <laughs> ah! Theme song in your top four in America. Number one. Wow. 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 Ever rec- Wow. That's a shock. Unbelievable. I, I, I can tell you. I'm stunned by that pick. You know. That's right, Jay. He yeah. is number one. He's the boss man. The boss man. I see we have breaking news on the hostage situation. Let's go back to New York. And our reporter, Jay, our the weatherman, yes. This man was shot by police. He's been shot? Yes. Was he killed or is he still alive? Yes. <laughs> you don't he know was that. killed. He was he was gunned down by the police. Yes. These are all yes. allegedly. Uh, yeah. What's that? It's all yes. alleged. It's all alleged. Well, when he's are, are you it, reading yeah. Are you reading this off of the television screen? Yes, or a, I am. It they says have yeah. a, a chief of police speaking right now. Read right. It says underneath there by update. You can It doesn't say the update. Date on there, right? Was he now. shot, Julie? It said it's all right. Go. Suspect shot, shot by officers. By, by officers. Wow. officers. That's all it says. Hold on. Um, three guys from Bruges just called me and asked if Ira was Flemish. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. Jay. Yes, now, I am. Now, for those of you listening, that is a smart retort. Thank you. You have to go to Jay, a. You're going to have to hold it one second. A lot you're going to have DJs, to go to a Globe or go to Google Maps, find out where Bruges is, and then you'll get the joke. Okay. Can I say something? Oh, no. A lot of the DJs. The only thing better for this bit is if the next person who came on had the word "flim" in their in their names. That'll never happen. That'll never. It, what are the odds? Let's go around the horn. What are the odds? Of a person whose real name has Flim in it being on this show within this next hour. Uh, Christina. Never in a million years. Shuley. That's too good to be true. No. Garrett. Is Ian Fleming still around? No, he's dead. Oh. Then Zero. Bob, Bob Bowie to you all. All right. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go now to Holiday Road. Uh, email me at J. Thomas Show at Sirius XM. You might win five hundred dollars. Here we go. Pull off the highway and into something amazing. Holiday Road and the J. Thomas Show. The way you win the five hundred is is what's happening right now. Uh, you recommend someone. Uh, Garrett looks it over, decides that well, this is something Jay would enjoy pulling off the road for. And then Ira the Weatherman, the most honest man at Sirius XM, will draw. After September 3rd, and somebody who has been on the air with us, not that the, they're certainly they're the person that they recommended, they win $500 in that random drawing. Okay, let's go now to Mark Del Bazo. Mark, you uh, submitted um, the, uh, the, aer- the, the aerodrome in Old Rhinebeck. You, uh, uh, have you been there yourself? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. It's a great place to go. Are you Wonderful in? Place. Are you in the Discovery Channel building right now? It's pretty loud. Yeah. Are you holding I'm a hostage? Actually, I'm on Broadway. Actually, I'm down with my family visiting New York City. Ah, oh, you should. Oh my! Oh, you should. We got to get him to come up. Uh, Garrett, leave his. Uh, what street are you on right now? What street are you on? Uh, 45th. Uh, Garrett, put him on hold. Christina, get his entire family security downstairs. Okay. I want the Del Bazo family to come up. Uh, can you come over? Can you walk three uh, blocks and come see yes, us? Yes, we can. Yes, All right, can. put them on hold. Uh, I want the Del uh, Garrett. I want the Del Bazo family up in that studio. We're right like there. the extreme okay. home makeover of radio. We make dreams come true. So the Del Bazo family will be here in just a moment. They're vacationing. Can you imagine their excitement when they go? Wow, we went up and we heard Jay Thomas's voice coming through a speaker. Um, now, go to oldrhinebeck dot org. And let's go to the old Rhinebeck Aerodrome uh, on our holiday road. Uh, what is your name, sir? Don Fleming. Would you believe? Wow. Stop it. Hey, hey. Wait a minute. 
Stop it. Your name isn't Don Fleming. It is indeed. has been for almost 67 years. How do you spell it? F-L-E-M-I-N-G. No, the first one. Donald. Okay. All right. We are amazed that we, that, that the odds are, that's a million to one. Now, uh, Jay, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I have some breaking news. Mm-hmm. I thought I was <laughs> waiting for that. Can you do it later, please? No, well, uh, it's breaking, Jay. All three hostages are safe. Thank God. Yep. Okay. Don, we may have to break in because, believe it or not, we are the news channel here at Sirius XM, and we're following this hostage situation at the uh, Discovery Channel offices in um, Delaware. Understand. Okay. Now, have you ever held anyone hostage in your life? No. We do um, on our air show, though. Wait what a minute. What do you mean? At the old Rhinebeck Aerodrome in lovely Rhinebeck or Red Hook, New York, in that area, 100 miles north of New York City, you hold someone hostage on one of the airplanes? How does that work? Actually, we uh, we have um, a melodrama that goes on during the air shows, and um, in it we have a Trudy True Love, of course, who's menaced by the Black Baron. And uh, that melodrama takes place while we get the airplane started and get things ready uh, and into position for the for the show. So uh, Trudy is uh, held hostage, even taking up in an airplane. And um, well, you just have to come to the show to see what. Trudy, true love. Does hold- she wing walk during the show? Uh, not actively, no. She, oh, okay. Uh, All right. Maybe now, be pursued across the wing. Wait a minute. She runs across the wing. Well. You have to come to the show to see it. Wow. Okay. So now you're up there in, um, uh, is that Hudson, the Hudson County area, that, that area, Hudson? Right. We're just, we're just, uh, right on the border, actually. The, the building, the uh, old, uh, Cole Palin, uh, house is in, uh, Rhinebeck, and then most of the field is in Red Hook. So we... Did, um, uh, Chelsea Clinton come by before she got married? No, but there was all kinds of uh, rumors that we were canceling our air show because we couldn't take the airplanes aloft. And uh, oh, that's right, that's right, I'm right. But well, did we, that happen? Did you have to cancel be, your air show? No, we had some restricted airspace, but uh, we held a full air show, and uh, <clears throat> the air show that weekend was um, uh, perhaps sparsely attended because of the fact everyone thought that uh, we were canceling the show because of. Uh, no now, activity. But you did we, nicely. Now, 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 listen, uh, Mr. Fleming. Uh, I uh, was raised in the South, and my uh, my grandfather had a couple of thousand acres, and he had this biplane, Shuley. And my uncle, one of uh, two or three of my uncles were pilots, and they would dust the um, field, you know. And when we were kids, we would be playing in like a field of whatever they were dusting. They grew all kinds of stuff. Now. That had to be bad for us, right, Don Fleming? The stuff they so. sprayed out of the back of a crop duster? I would think in those days it would have been something that's outlawed today. Uh, well, Jay- of course it is. And two of my cousins died horrible, painful deaths of of this cancer where their feet looked like corn before they were dead. Turned into kernels of corn. Uh, Jay? Yeah. Some just came across the wire. What is it? Breaking news. The hostages are now demanding to be refunded the $3 they paid for the Discovery Channel tour. Oh, boy. Don, you know what? Thank God that nobody ever gets taken hostage at the old Rhinebeck Aerodrome. What's the oldest plane you have there? We have a 1909 Blario, which is the oldest airplane flying in, well, in the, the, uh, on the continent today. Mm -hmm. Wow. America's. Now, a lot of people go to air shows and you fear, you know, crashes and do you Some people go there to see a crash, kind of like NASCAR sometimes, you what know? What sick individuals. There's some uh, sick do, people. Do you have where the planes do a dog fight and actually do some dangerous stunts? Yes, we actually do uh, barnstorming stunts and we do the dog fights. We have two separate shows, actually. We have the barnstorming and pioneer aircraft show on Saturday uh-huh. and we have a World War One oriented show on Sunday. Wow. And that then of should course, be very, very interesting. Very interesting. Very interesting. Well, thank <coughs> you only, so much. Yeah, what's we're what's the that only doing? ones actually in the world that do air shows with our airplanes. That's why we call it the uh, Living Museum of Antique Aircraft. 
By the way, what is on the side of one of those airplanes? Is it like canvas with paint on it? Uh, most of them are canvas. We we do have some that have uh, sheet metal on them. The later ones that were built in the 30s. Uh, but uh, all of the World War I airplanes and what you'd call the classic barnstormer airplanes are mm. wood fabric, some some metal uh, bracing, and mm-hmm. uh, they're fabric mm-hmm. with paint. Mm-hmm. With all dope. I'm going to ask you one final question here. I heard that when they first mounted a machine gun onto you know, the, the, the plane to, to, to be, you know, to shoot the gun. They forgot to synchronize it with the prop, and they flew up there, and it shot the props off. Is that a true story, or is that... Um... Well, it's uh, partially true. Uh, initially, they uh, they clad the propeller in metal so that they would deflect the bullets that actually hit the propeller. Oh, but, my uh, God, that's ridiculous. So but then Anthony Fokker, he uh, came in, and he put... The, What'd you uh, call him? Anthony Fokker. Oh, yeah. yeah. He put a uh, cam on the engine that would keep the end of the uh, machine gun from firing at the same time the prop was in. The right. Head. That's what's amazing is 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 I don't even know that I would trust that. They literally you pull the trigger and the prop is going at at what uh, revolutions per minute? What is the prop going at? Fast plus. per minute. How, what is it? Twelve hundred plus. Wow. Twelve hundred plus revolutions uh, per minute. And then the bullet would go in between the... Um, it sounds the, impossible. It does sound impossible. Don? They made it work. I know they, they made it work, Don. How did they make it work is the question. Well, it was a gear. It was just like a cam, and it uh, just made sure that the uh, hammer mm-hmm. didn't fall on the cartridge at the time that the propeller was in position to be hit. But it does sound impossible. Well, no, I think anything is possible today, uh, Mm -hmm. given what we've come through with aviation and the state of aircraft today versus the ones that we fly every weekend uh, up at Old Rhinebeck. Uh, I'm sorry, When you were a young man, one second, did you ever wear the goggles and the hat and the scarf and pick up women at the bars in the area? Did you ever say you were the Red Baron? Yeah. I I did not. Actually, I'm not an aviator myself. Uh, Oh, come on. You don't fly anything? No, my uh, my good friend that is the president of air shows flies the Blario every weekend in the mm-hmm. uh, Pioneer Air, air Show, mm-hmm. and um, his, um, he's been an aviator, flown the 747s with an airline, and now he's flying the oldest airplane in the United States, wow. still flies. Well, Garrett, thank you so much for having Don Fleming on here. You're welcome. Uh, go to oldrhinebeck.org, or you can go right to... Um, well, you go to the fine old Rhinebeck Aerodrome, and and thanks for being on Holiday Road. Thank you so much, okay, Don. We'll be Fleming. having shows every weekend between now and the seventeenth of October. Don, you right. may want to know this before you go. Uh, we have some breaking news here. Breaking news. One of the hostages of the three hostages had a nasty mole that uh, just got a development deal on TLC. Working mm-hmm. title, Little Hostage, Big Mole. <laughs> Thank That's you. That's a joke about the hostages at the Discovery t- Channel, Don. <laughs> I understand. You know they have those weird names of shows and all. So. You know, Don, <laughs> the Hudson Valley. Yeah. You live in the Hudson Valley, right? Actually, I live in Connecticut, but I'm just about an hour from Oh, Hudson boy, I listen to a radio station out there. And the Hudson Valley's own radio station, WHUD, on the Hudson. Oh, yeah? Yes, yes. They play records of the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Do you know Cindy from Dwayne Reed? Cindy from Dwayne Weed, yes! <laughs> Dwayne Weed. Don, thank you so much for Don, being a, thank you. You being a part of uh, one of the most Don, unusual uh, is your phone radio from shows. from World War II? Nothing from World War II. Everything is pre-World War II. Great. Oh, thank Don, you. Don, thank you so much. Don Fleming. All right. Hey, Don. Thank you. What are the odds that within five minutes we had somebody on named <laughs> Fleming? Hey, by the way, um, how about that at, pick, Jay, huh? Call me at 888-4-102-102. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't you bragging over there? <laughs> yeah. How why about that you, pick? Hey, why don't you call me at 888-4-102-102 and remind me... <laughs> What I said to Garrett, well, about an hour or so ago. Okay. How about, how about, does this remind you? I wish I was in between the rabbi and his wife during that interview. Someone well, uh, just Facebooked me and they said, 
then why would you have the DeBazio family come up? Because <laughs> yeah. I want to punch him in the nose. That's why. <laughs> All okay. nine of them. Oh, no. Oh, you, I can't oh, wait. No. Thank you. <laughs> Oh my God! So they're. A, I tell you what, they're here's Catholics. A here's they're a crazy Catholics. idea. You know, Hear me out. Even... I got a crazy idea, but I think it what might be it? funny. What? Let's take him hostage. What do you guys think? <laughs> <laughs> we'll do it like uh, like in the Bronx Tale. I'll lock the studio door and go. Now you can't leave. No, you know what else you do? You play the same record over and over again. <laughs> like ground. You know, day. I actually worked at two stations <laughs> where a disc jockey. Locked himself in the studio and played the same record over and over again. I know who the DJ was. It, well, a lot of guys did it, but it was one of those ones when a jock flipped out. That's what they would do. Was who it do you real know that, though, or was yes? It a oh no, we did. There were promotions that were done like that, which I never mm-hmm. did. But we had two guys. No, no, we had two guys. One of them took a broom handle. Because oh, the door opened out towards That's never you. a good sign. And he put the broom handle in the you know the, the Jay, studio door. Yeah. Could I say we, something? We no. couldn't get in there. Could you know. I say something? And I got mad at him no, because no, no. I asked no. him to try and play a record that that I'd gotten payola for. Ah, you know, always something with you. Yes, go ahead, Garrett. Jay, <laughs> Jay, when I was uh, with you on mm-hmm. another. Radio station. Well, let's not mention that. We're not going to say the caller. Okay. This guy <laughs> that was on the Sunny Joe, he says to me, How did you get into this goddamn studio? That he, he uh, Sunny Joe yelled at you? Yes, Sunny Joe. Scumbag. And what did you say to him? I said, Well, I'm bringing back the tape machine from uh, the Jay Thomas show. You had a tape machine? Yes, I had the I... tape recorder. Oh, we sent him out with a tape recorder. Yeah. <laughs> and he says to me, <laughs> Who the hell gave you permission to come in to the studio? Who gave you the numbers of the door? Oh, well, I did. I said to him, Oh, mm-hmm. I got permission to come in here. All I'm right. the big eye. Oh. Yeah, all right. Well, I tell you what, that's an interesting story. We'll have to hear more of it later on. We have breaking news. Uh, let's go now out in the field. Uh, I'm glad you didn't have to turn away from Sirius 108 or XM 139 to get complete and breaking hostage news. Uh, let's go. Good evening, Mr. and Mrs. America and all the ships at sea. It's the Gumbo Radio Network. That's what I'm talking about. Let's join a special reporter in the field, Jeff Furlock. Who? Jeff Furlock. What's that Jeff name again? Furlock. What? Jeff Furlock. Who? I missed Jeff it. Jeff Furlock reporting live from the Discovery Channel offices, and apparently the longest two hours in history are almost over. It appears that the gunman was shot holding a copy of Mr. Holland's opus and yelling something about the injustice of Jay Thomas's career. We're not sure if he's upset that Jay has you know. gotten more work or that he's gotten too much work. With this report live from the scene, back to you guys in the studio. That, that was not worth it. That should teach you, Jay, not that to step not, on a guy's joke that he's working on, what he calls not, it with stupid sound effects. That was not worth it right there. That was not it. <laughs> I approve that story. That was that was stupid. <laughs> that was Can I go home now? <laughs> yeah, get out of here. Just keep driving. Keep moving. Ask your wife that question. Let's go to Paul of Toronto, 8884-102-102. How you doing, Paul? Paul, in the middle of this phone call, if we have breaking news, we'll have to break into it and go right directly to it. Okay? Okay. I, hey, Jay, can I ask um, Shuli a question? Sure. Are you in your plane right now, sir? <laughs> yes, I am. Okay, go ahead. Shuli, you were bragging about three, four weeks ago about you did a comedy night. It was really good. 70 old people showed up. Yeah. Right? Like, what did you get paid for that? Uh, a dollar a person. So I walked with seventy, free and clear. Well, no, I got. Now, remember, I they, made a little more, paid, but they not paid much. Twenty bucks a head to get in. Then right. they drank. Right. I mean, come on, we're talking real money. I mean, I'm not. I'm not kicking my feet up, lighting a cigar with the money, but you he know. meant to say seven hundred. That's what he meant to say. What's that? It was more than just him there. He had to split that between people. Yeah, I, I know. don't know. I, I mean, 
Well, Paul, you're right. They don't make any money. What's your fucking point? Right, Jackson Hewitt. What the fuck you want from yeah, my life? Yeah, what do you want? What do you want, Paul? Why do you want to hurt, Paul? Why do you want to hurt? Shomer, why do you want to hurt, Paul? Why do you want to hurt? Shomer, why do you want to hurt, Paul? There you go. I hope your fucking grandmother enjoys it. <laughs> Thanks for the All call, right. buddy. Get rid of him. <laughs> Great when a fan calls. We got a chance to actually talk to them. Um, safety advocates are now urging Congress and regulators to force car makers I like to install a warning system that will help parents do what? It is going to happen so fast, and it's because this year was the worst year ever for this to happen. Let's go around the horn. It's Science Wednesday on the Jay Thomas Show. What? I mean, they are going to force, the word is you is called force them to install this warning system in the car. What is it? Sure. Start somewhere else. I don't, I don't, I, I'm not ready for, uh, I'm thinking. It's for parents with children. Parents with okay. children. They're yes. going to force the parents. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. All right, I got it. What is it? They're going to force them to take their kids out of the car when they get out of the car. You're close. Wow. Um, what do you think it is, Garrett? It warns you when your kid is getting too fat. There'll be blips all over you the screen. You know what? Quit okay. reading my stuff. Oh, is that it? No, it isn't. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's, go. <laughs> let's go to Christina Palumbo. You looked at me like the rabbi did with huge yeah. eyes going, Hello. what? Hello. Christina, what do you? What is they're forcing them? If you have kids, what is it? Uh, I, to, if if the uh, kid is thirsty or not. <laughs> I, now not you funny. and Shuli are both close. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. Uh, what do you think it is, Ira? Uh, fist fisting. Fisting. They don't want any more children fisted. Good guess, Ira. Good guess. Not good. Take it out. Um, uh, it would prevent seat belts. It would prevent parents <laughs> from forgetting. That their children are in the car yeah. when they get out. Yeah. 43 children this year have died in a hot car. The parents... Which is different from a hot car. Totally different. No, but listen. Either the forgot answer? they were in the car <laughs> or thought that they could leave them in the car with the windows rolled up in, mm -hmm. in, in even if it's 65 degrees. That happened a it, lot in Vegas. And, and 20 degrees... After 15 minutes, after an hour, the heat inside of the car goes up 43 degrees, even if it's 55 outside. Right. If the sun is shining. 40. And, now, you know, here's one. How about don't go to the casino if your kid can't get out of the car and panhandle while you're in there? I think you know? one of the, one, one of the parents that it happened to in <clears throat> Vegas, uh, was quoted as saying, Look, the poker machine was hotter than the temperature in the car, if you can believe that. And I'm not walking away from the machine. Instead of forcing car... Now, the car makers don't know how they're going to do this. It's like, you know, it's going to have to be some sort of a warning system in the car seat or whatever. How about everybody, when they have a child, like you leave the hospital, and they give you and your wife a piece of colored string, and you wrap it around your wrist to remind you you have a child? <laughs> wow. I mean, that's all you have to do is remember that you have a kid. They forget. You know, the saddest one was a guy went off to work, and Left the, the wife kid said, on the roof of the car. <laughs> that one? No. Wow. And said, "Hey, can you drop the kid off?" And he forgot to drop the kid off. Went to work. Oh, jeez. Oh, can you imagine? Horrible. Well, but I mean, you know, I blame the kid. It's epidemic. It I mean. 43 kids is a lot of children. I mean, it's, you know, it's like more than choking in a year. But in that case, with the guy who went to work, forgot about the kid. I kind of blame the kid. I mean, he's way too quiet and too good. You got to make some noise. Remind well, they dad fall back asleep. There. I mean, it's unbelievable. A federal judge has ruled that a man uh, who has psychologically become dependent and addicted to the online video game Lineage or Lineage 2. Do you know that game, Garrett? I know of it. I've never played it. Yeah, a judge, know. a federal judge in Honolulu, says that Craig Smallwood 
uh, can proceed with his lawsuit. Smallwood. That's his is that name. like Peter Dinklage? <laughs> it is. Oh. We said anything named Dinklage is small. Yeah. Um, Craig Smallwood, because of a lineage two, has been left unable to function independently on daily activities. He cannot get dressed, bathe, or communicate with his family or friends. He has spent more than 20,000 hours playing the multiplayer online game. He's 51, Shuley. They're allowing him to sue the NC Soft Corporation. His name is Smallwood. He's suing the NC Soft Corporation because they never warned him that he could become addicted. Wow. Why would the judge allow that? That's the one that's stupid. Yeah. God. Somebody should have told me I was a fucking idiot. He was smart enough to get a lawyer. <laughs> He's smart right? enough to play. Let me tell you something. I guarantee you that game isn't easy. It it's probably takes, you know, you got to gotta think a little bit about it. I don't know. It's one of those computer games where you probably create characters and shit. And yeah. He, 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 he just... doesn't bathe. He doesn't dress. He doesn't communicate with his family. He just sits in front. He sleeps in the chair. His food has to be brought to him. He cannot leave. And when they try and remove, his family tried to pick, he went berserk in the chair. Could not, couldn't leave. <laughs> I mean, how did he get to court for Christ? Come on. Let's go to Dwayne of Alabama. Uh, Dwayne, before we go another step how you further. Doing, Dwayne, Dwayne, right now the temperature mm-hmm. is 100 degrees in, in Alabama. Alabama. Dwayne, you've lost the great running back. Do you think this will, Hurt your chances against San Jose State over the weekend? <laughs> Dwayne of Alabama, you think the Crimson Tide is going to be able to beat the powerhouse San Jose State over the weekend? Well, I don't know anything about football, Jay, and I'm from Montana. Oh, I want to tell you about something else. Parents need to install in their cars for their kids. What is it? That's some kind of sensor, so when they take their hands off the wheel to send a text message or a sexting, yeah. the car shuts down or tells the parents. When the child takes his hands off the wheel, how, how will the car know that it's the, a teenager or a person under 21? How would they know that? Well, it doesn't need to know that. Anybody takes their hands off the wheel while they're driving, they shouldn't. They, they're texting or they're playing with the radio or they're fondling themselves, they need to keep their hands on the wheel. Dwayne, well, yes. the tub, the I'm drowning. <laughs> no, no, that's not. That's not. <laughs> Dwayne, how about Calandra Hamilton? What about her? Guilty. What, what? I don't know. Who is that? She was the Cincinnati woman who was simultaneously texting, <laughs> masturbating with a sex toy, and watching a pornographic <laughs> video yeah. while she was driving last week. That's who it is. What's her website? You don't want to know. Oh, really? Yeah. What do you mean? What happened? She's fugly? She's fugly. Oh. Well, she looks like her name ought to be Chuck Hamilton. <laughs> um, she was in a 2008 Pontiac. You know why they stopped her? What what made them stop her? Yeah. Well, Overly tinted windows. <laughs> Gee, I wonder why. She's got a whole fucking porn scene going on in the car. Questioned by cops, Ms. Hamilton admitted to engaging in auto-erotic manipulation, and then she revealed she had also been watching a porno movie that was playing on the laptop of a friend next to her. I mean, really, you need sex that much? Like, it's it's that crucial? You know? That you have to do multiple things? Wow. I could understand driving and beating off. All right, I'll give you that. But, uh, then the cops found a crack pipe in her purse. Ah. Now that's multi-tasting. Yes, it is. She was texting, smoking crack, masturbating, and watching a porno. Yeah, the Discovery Channel ought to have this gal on, Shuley. <laughs> guys should have taken her hostage. You would have been you entertained. Okay? Like it crazy. ought to be the Discovery Playboy <laughs> Channel with this one on there. There's a show All for right. her called, How the Fuck Did She Do That? Thank you, Dwayne. See you later. Let's go to the breadbasket of America where Yuli is waiting. By the way, we're waiting for the, what's the name of the family that's coming up? What's the Duggards. The, Del Bazo. No. Del the Del Bazos. Nine of them. They have uh, checked in about a few minutes ago, so they should be here any minute. Perfect. They should be here now, just for those in time of you for the listening. end of the show. 
For those of you listening, imagine you're walking around New York on vacation. You recommend something to someone apparently you admire incredibly. You're walking around. The next thing you know, you're up in the studio. Okay? Mm-hmm. Imagine that. Yuli of Chicago. Could you imagine okay, you and your problem. family One, just all of a sudden two, coming in? Coming in. Look What's this. up, guys? Come on in. Come on in, everybody. Yuli, can you imagine? <laughs> Hi. One of them's got hello, Spider-Man hello, mask hello. painted on his face. What Yuli, what made mean? you call us, Yuli? What do you want to, who hey. do you want to talk to? Hey, Jay, I just thought maybe from now on when uh, Ira gave the temperature out, yeah. you could also let us know what the temperature would be in a locked vehicle at the same location. It's <laughs> a wonderful a idea. vehicle, it's got to right. be around 200 <laughs> degrees. There you go. You know what, Yuli? Uh, Thank you very okay. much. Remember, All right. it's the listener that runs the show. Stay where you are. We will have live, real people who just were walking down the street. I'm and surrounded, now- Jay. They will know the stardom, the excitement, that the thing that, that only a few of us know of when people will be listening to every single word that they're saying next. Ira, uh, where does this rank in your top songs? That great number, what? number five. Number five. Wow. Number five out of four. Turn it up. Turn it up. What is it? What is this? What song is this? What's, what? I don't know what this song is. What is it? The rookie just gave Garrett. What's the name of the song? You were singing it before, Ira. Macho Man. Yeah. Macho, oh, it's Macho, Macho Man, Man by the YMCA. All right. I wanna be a Macho Man. All right. Hey. I only wish that I was could be transported 3,000 miles to New York. As far as I'm concerned, I've never heard so much fun in my life back in the studio. You are and, missing uh, out, pal. A few moments ago, uh, we had a, a thrilling uh, interview for the Holiday Road with a man who maybe this weekend will crash and die at the at the... <laughs> the the air show, and I don't think he would have any emotions even as the plane <laughs> was screaming toward the ground. Do you guys? I don't think so, no. uh, Mr. Fleming. Uh, let's welcome the Del Bazo. Is it Del Balzo? Del Balzos. Del Balzos? Yes. Del Balzos. What is your name, Mr. Del Balzo? What My name is Mark, Jay. Mark Del Balzo. Wow. That's right. Yay! Yay! Now, Mark, now, Mark I, they say there are nine people there. I, I am all by myself. I can't see if they're male, female, whatever. My guess is you are a person that was Catholic and now you're a Mormon. Is that correct? Well, we're no, we're Catholic, but we're very good looking. So you know, you're very nice. So is it your family or an extended family? Is it the wife and eight children? I mean, how? What? What's with the nine or the it's, wife uh, and seven? Children? My wife and four boys, and my right. brother, his wife, and his daughter. One of his daughters. Oh, so there are some other people in there of other whatever. Yeah. Now, in your, you say you were vacationing. Where are you from? Uh, from Pauling, New York. Now, originally from Syracuse. So you drove from Pauling down to Manhattan, but you had to be on the air today because you recommended uh, a holiday road. And the next thing you know, you're seeing one of the most amazing broadcast facilities in the universe. I mean that. Yeah, it's a great country. No, I know. Now, that sounds like you're making fun. <laughs> I feel a little insulted right now. No, don't be, please. This is a little uncomfortable all of a sudden. No, uh, we actually. I took think the I've train done something down. incredible for your family, and I, Shirley, did you feel as though he realize, realizes where he is, what's going on? Maybe he hasn't seen the server room and ah! the and oh, the, that's why the actual oh, satellite uh, tracking okay thing. After you, after we finish this, you know we're very in space right now, right? This very uncomfortable interview, <laughs> Christina and uh, Ira, the weatherman, are going to take you on a private. Listen to this one. On a private tour of Sirius XM. Every station, yes, every will. channel, yes, I will. Yeah. every square oh, inch of this building, oh, including the 19th floor, you will see. <laughs> We're going to show you where the mail is sent out. Jay, all of it. You're going to see it all. I set up my Del Bolo Bozos. <laughs> no, you didn't. Once it really hurt. No, no, stop that. <laughs> now, um, is it what's the first name again? Uh, Mark. Mark Del Balzo. Mark, when do you normally listen to uh, Sirius XM or the, this show? Because it's uh, great that you're a contestant. When do you listen? Uh, typically, uh, 
3 o'clock at my desk on your show on 10, what is it, 106, I think, or 108? 108, 108 and, and then 139. Then, um, wow. On mm-hmm. s- Friday mornings. On and do you... Hey! Is your wife hey! there? Is your is your wife there in the studio? Uh, yes, she is. She's Bring her. I have to ask her a question because this is something I, <laughs> I need to do. I need to ask the wife. Mrs. <laughs> Mrs. Mrs. Uh, Del Balzo. Hi, how are you? Why wouldn't you have changed your name is my first question. From What was your maiden name? Rinder. I, you should have stayed. You should have made the whole family be Rinders. When you say Del Balzo, do people kind of pause after they say it? Yep. Nobody okay. understands what we're how how to pronounce it. How they to have say a lot of different else. pronunciations. What are, yeah, oh, we, we were. Del Blasio. Del Blasio. Del Blasio. Even the children are traumatized by yeah. this name. <laughs> One kid's wearing a mask. He doesn't even want to be recognized. Now, I, I'm sorry. What is your first name again, Mrs. Laurie. Dobals? Laurie. Now, Laurie, um, he listens to the show quite a bit. Does he ever come home and try uh, jokes out on you that he's heard on the show or to- tell uh, you things? Probably. It's hard to tell. We tune him out a lot. You do. <laughs> a lot of wives people do. say that, that the guy who's a big fan of the radio show comes home and he tries to tell everybody what was said, and it's never as good and a lot of people don't even listen to me because of the people that have tried to explain <laughs> what goes on. So, uh, what do you think his attraction is to the show? I don't know. <laughs> do you know anything about the show? Uh, no, actually, I don't. <laughs> well, do you know what? Because we don't allow wives to listen to this show. That's right. <laughs> so we have, club. hey, you betcha. And the women that do listen, their husbands can't listen. Okay? <laughs> right. Christina's this, husband can't listen. This is a naughty show. We do naughty stuff over here. Okay? So it's a chance for your husband to kind of like not be married for three hours. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Think I'm kidding you? I'm telling you right now. All right. This is even more uncomfortable than <laughs> when I was talking to Mark a few minutes ago. <laughs> Okay, now, um, what have you seen so far of the building? What have you seen uh, of the Sirius XM? Uh, we just came upstairs, and we saw the lobby, and we came in. Yeah, the elevator is very nice. <laughs> you saw the elevator? Yeah. All right. Would you like to see, all kidding aside, where all the people broadcast? There are hundreds of studios there. And um, what can you show them, Um Ira, what, what oh, can sh- I can show them where the the guy with the wig is, cousin Brucey. You can show them where cousin Brucey is. Yeah. So, right. uh, would you would you and the rest of the family enjoy a little tour of the show? We only have a few minutes left, so I'd like you to walk out, take the tour, and try and come back. Okay. Sure. Is this a great vacation it's like, gift? It sounds like she's waiting for a trap to be sprung on. Lori, like, Lori is this sure. an unbelievable vacation gift to be yes, up here? It is. All right. Would you have rather been out there in the 90 degree right. weather in the street? Nicely air conditioned. Yeah. You know what? Please, Mark, is this a great thing that's happening? It's truly wonderful. It's unbelievable. That's what I need. I want Now I will finally believe somebody. Take your family, uh, your in-laws and everybody, whoever there, and please go on the tour and try and come back in the next 15 minutes or so. Okay? Well, thank you very All much. Right. We appreciate who, it. Who are we going to send? Let's hear it for the Del Balzo family. Oh, man. It's unbelievable. Is Ira going to take him? Christina can go, Garrett. Yeah, I'll yeah, take I think Christina him, should go. And Ira. Christina, please go with him. Ira. All right. Ira's Follow Ira. me, everybody. Ira's first All stop right. on the tour of the break Come room. On. Come on. Oh, this is fabulous. Ira, show them the NFL yeah. channel and right. show them everything. Right. Howard's picture in the lobby. Show them the picture. Show them the Sibian. <laughs> unbelievable. There we go. They're going off into the... Did you hear, Ira? <laughs> People pay a lot of money for this, Mark. Okay? People would pay top dollar for this shit. Unbelievable. They're walking down the street. Next thing you know, they're on the air. Let's jump at the Dolbalzos. <laughs> Those are the two most uncomfortable interviews I've ever had. Well, I hand Ira the note for... I sat on my Del Balzos, and, no. and he shakes his head no and gives it back to me. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, he shot me down. So then, And then all of a sudden, he had a change of heart, and he asked for it back. Um, so, so uh, uh, Garrett, does security care that we have nine people roaming the halls there? No, they're signed in with their badges. That's all that matters. You know what? This has got to be exciting for them. You know what I mean? Come on. Walking down the street, next thing you know, <laughs> they're walking seeing a past studio now. Well, they're seeing a broadcast facility, for God's sake. Christina's sakes. got the uh, Vanna White showcase hands going. Of course. Yeah. Is she going to show when I, go, when I go, even the 19th floor, she'll show to you. She's like, oh, Christ. Please tell them to take them 
by what they call the um, the the jock computers. What do they call that area? Jock lounge. Jock lounge. But it's all computers where everybody that works here is looking for a job. The, <laughs> the funniest thing about this, I'm looking out the window. Ira looks like it's the first time he's been up here. Like he's on the tour. He's staring through the windows. He's like, yeah, that's great. <laughs> so funny. Um, like what other what other place? When you go to a mental asylum, they don't let the nuts give you a tour. <laughs> Um, this is Lenny. He stabbed his mom. He's going to show you around. Last night, I went out of my way. My wife's out of town with her girlfriend. The The kid that's left with me doesn't speak to me. Um, so I've... <laughs> Comfortable. Put, I, I went home and I made a lasagna for him, you know. And He wanted me to watch a vampire movie. And I said, you know, I don't like all the blood. And he goes, well, never mind! <laughs> So, so I love was, your conversations with that kid. It's really bad, and and we and you know what's funny? We try not to. So then I just spent thirteen hundred dollars getting all the nicks and the bangs and the cracks out of this ten year old Land Cruiser that we gave him for school. Just got it all done. I walk up the driveway yesterday, and of course. The fender is like, mm. you know, hanging off the back of the car. I hated that. I man. come around, I go like this. What's this? He goes like this. Oh, I don't know. I go, what? It's it's all smashed back here. He goes, you know, when I was at the beach. I'm I, sorry. They're walking by the window and getting they're literally doing take, circles. <laughs> taking them in a circle around. <laughs> Iris just following the in Brucey's studio and Iris laughs in the line. <laughs> like the little baby duckling. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I was looking uh, left and right like I've never seen any of this before. We, we you know what? We got to get a camera and film this. <laughs> you know, we got to we got to put oh, this we on. We could just television. use the security cam footage. <laughs> just ask yeah. him for the tape. So he, cr- he apparently crashed the car and everything else. So so that's the end of our evening and I'm pissed off and I'm going to get the thing fixed. So I'm kind of like not tired and I go, you know, there's nothing on. There was no ball game on or anything. And I turn on ABC, and Glee was on. I've Is never watched one episode. It's on Fox, but I've never watched Fox. one episode. Well, it won, you know, the Emmys, right? Yeah, and yeah. and that got and me thinking so, for a second. Maybe I should watch one of these episodes. Well, you know, I read this article about this guy wrote an article that sucks, and the other show sucks, and and he says he doesn't know why. So I'd read all this stuff, and I go, you know, let me just watch it, right? Well, the weird thing is is in this nation where everybody is saying gays can't get married and all every show is kind of gay now this show is is totally gay if but it, it was, was fun yeah it's super gay it's just missing a cape this the show. voices the singing voices i mean they do there is some um what do you call those <laughs> um tunes what's the, what's the what, the auto tune they they do auto tune and all but there's this really gay guy in the glee club I don't know the cast. And he has a voice like that. He has a girl's voice. Right. So I know he's going to be an incredible singer. You right, know right. And dancer. There, most likely. There's a big guy in it, a big, you know, senior in high school. Jock. And it, and it looks like to me the gay guy is, you know, kind of um, being inappropriate with him. So the big jockey guy, but he's in the glee club, they have all kinds of different scenarios going on. You know, they go from one right. to the other. And then they have, what's her name, uh, Jane Lynch, and they're coming the right biggest, again. tallest gay woman in the world, and she's in there doing... So I go, wow, this is about a gay guy. <laughs> what are you laughing at? They just walked by again. <laughs> no, they didn't. Iris, no, and she's got a. I was like a like an Iranian woman with her husband. They coming back in. They're coming back in. The Del Balzos. They, but they didn't see the whole studio, did they? No. Oh, they did. Oh. Did you take him where everybody was sitting? Yeah. Did you take him into the president's office? <laughs> Did you take them up to 37? Come on. No, not 37. <laughs> Where the president I'm not going to take them to the president. Say to the president, who's never heard of me, hey, mm-hmm. these people were listening. I, I, so if that's I'm it. Being honest, I don't even know where he sits. But He uh, sits at the end <laughs> of the hall on 36. Oh, okay. okay. Good, good to know. Well, I there took them go. to everything. Um, Iris started off the tour while 
We all stood and <laughs> stared at Cousin Brucey for, I don't know, what would you guys say, about three minutes? Jeez, did he pound on the window? <laughs> well, he just he just stood Wait. in awe. And it was well, did the, ball, well did, did the DeBalzos enjoy the tour? Did you enjoy the tour? Yes. Yes. Very much so. <laughs> That's all that counts. The best tour guide you've ever had? Oh, Surely wonderful. Wonderful. All that counts. I was the best tour guide you've ever had. <laughs> exactly. Ira was bringing up the what, caboose. Though, they're back the so tour. soon, it doesn't you seem like... You said 15 like, minutes. We left at 5.30. It no doesn't way. seem... No, God. You've been gone four minutes. Yeah, you, you left at 544. Did you see every single thing? Did I even take you to where we call if there's an emergency? What did I tell you? Listen, no, wait a minute. Listen, you're a good family. You don't have to lie for her. <laughs> did it's you okay. take them to where the people are sitting in the little booths yes. and talking to themselves? Yes, I did. I showed them where the music people record all of their really? shows. Really? Did yes. you take them to the Howard 100 newsroom? Well, I can't get back there. I don't have the Did special... you take them back to where the, the pretzels and everything are? No, I didn't take them. Well, back. they Ira's might have wanted a snack. Ira's vault. Jay, take them and get them a snack. Jay, that they, kitchen only you holds. You want to take all people. nine of them through? Yes, to thirty-six. To get them a all snack. the way yeah. and get them a snack. And, and let me tell you and something. Then come back. If they all grab something, no, they it won't still, ruin listen, your dinner. Even you if they all the grab place. something, it's still less right. than what Ira's leaving here with. Take them <laughs> right <laughs> now and take all them to the snack room. All of them are just the kids. Every one all of them right. goes to the <laughs> snack room right now. Follow me, guys. Snack room. <laughs> snack, right. room. <laughs> snack room. <laughs> snack room. <laughs> snack room. Ira. They're going to the snack room. You know how when... There's juice. You know how when, they got everything hey, there. Hey, she, yes. You know how when four minutes feels like 30? You know that? Yeah. She said, we left it no, you didn't. I literally looked at the clock. It was 44 when no, she left with him. No, no. She's back I have in three a, minutes. No, I have a clock in front of me. I, I watched it because I'm trying to figure the break out. You should call Mark so, and, his, and the other dude back here so the husbands can stay. Let me let me uh, also finish this about yeah, Glee. Sorry, so there's a big tall guy, and I go, gee, it's about you know harassment, I guess, the gay guy. So the tall guy says, what's the deal with your um, mother being with my dad? And the gay kid says, oh, wow, we can spend more time together in the whole thing. So I'm thinking, oh, so that's the deal. The, the parents are dating. One kid's gay. Well, they go into the glee room, and the kid, the gay kid, has an incredible voice. Right. And he sings some incredible love song to the big tall guy. Ew. But the big tall guy is gay. Ah. And so I'm watching the thing. Like most going, jocks in high school. It was the weirdest show because, and you know, unbelievable singing. And well, somebody a, I knew says, you know, you should check out Glee. Uh, they do a really, and I go, that show seems a little gay. And they go, no, it's awesome. They do uh, a version of "Don't Stop Believing" by Journey. That's that's so good. And I go, finally, they made it gayer. <laughs> Don't stop believing by having gay kids sing. It's, <laughs> it's like I a for, musical, um, but right. a TV show. Yeah, they he, they sang a a back rack and David song, one of those you know like a Dion Warwick oldie that the right. guy sang a love song to this guy. Do you know the way to my well? Then cave? at the end of it, the the guy looks at the gay guy, and I think I don't know where this is going. He goes, oh, I love you. He starts singing back to him, right? Jeez. Oh, yeah, it is weird. Well, the two, yeah, the two number that. one shows. A no, no, you'll scene. like the show, and your wife will love it. I'm telling you. it's The, the singing's unreal. I mean, I don't know how they do that every week, but uh, I did not dislike it. I was just amazed, you know, at, at how... And, and also that other, the show, uh, Modern Family. That's a killer show. Yeah. That is great. You, you love that show. I do. I love Modern Family. Right now on the Discovery wow. Channel, please news co conference <laughs> on Discovery Channel building mm -hmm. situation. What is it? That, that's it. She's just reading what it says. Say, uh, hostages <laughs> now safe at Discovery Channel building well, in, in Maryland. Too. They're safe. Yes. Is the guy dead? Is the Chinese guy dead? It does not say whether or not he's mm -hmm. dead. The de the only but thing they shot it. You know what they serve there? Hostage safe tuna. Did you know that? <laughs> <laughs> the Discovery Channel. He's good. a jackass. He should have been. They should have mm -hmm. stumped on his balls. Ira, the just balls do the news. Very, We're very not, hold it, Ira. We're not Fox. We're CNN. We do the news. We don't comment. We'll be right back. Hey, Thomas. Well, when this show started, there were hostages. Now they're freed. The guy's been shot. People came up from the street. The Del Balzo family. Let's go to Carl. Carl, are you the brother of Mark Del Balzo? That I am. What did you think of this 
unexpected tour. It was stunning. And what did you think of our buxom docent, Christina Palumbo? She's a great personality. <laughs> well, there you go, folks. I only wish Who I was in New York. Who gave you a better tour? <laughs> yeah. Uh, good question. By the uh, way, that's kind of a Sophie's J- choice. John choice. Glenn <laughs> called and said he two more orbits, and they beat his record. By the way, around the hey, thank you to the Del Balzo family. Yay! <laughs> and we'll see you thank later. You the show's much. over. My pleasure. Thank you again. All right, my pleasure. Jay, they're asking for their money back. What do I do?